Okay, welcome to the Town of Corte Madera Planning Commission for Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. Adam, would you please call the roll? Good evening, sure. Uh, Commissioner, <clears throat> Commissioner uh, Metcalf. Here. Commissioner Bundy. Here. Commissioner Chase. Here. Mr. Bendel. Here. And Commissioner Rizzo. Here. Great, okay, we're all here and accounted for. Tonight, uh, we have, uh, as always, public comment for that, which is not on tonight's agenda. So we can start with that. And if you have a comment you would like to contribute that has nothing to do with the agenda for tonight, please raise your hand or you can uh, send in a chat or you can email to public comment at tcmmail.org. So I don't know if there are any hands that you've got, uh, Tracy for public comment. Uh, thank you, Chair Chase. I don't see any hands raised. Um, okay. I'll check email. And no email either. Okay. Very good. So we'll just close that public comment for that which is not on tonight's agenda. And we'll go directly to um, our hearing for tonight. So this is a significant item. This is the Marriott Residence Inn at 56 Bolo Madera Boulevard. This is a public hearing for consideration and possible recommendation to approve applications for a new 149 room Marriott Residence Inn Hotel, including ancillary facilities. Applications include a conditional use permit with hotel floor bonus and a preliminary and precise plans including design review and sign permits. So uh, I'll just lay this out a little bit. Mr. Wolf will introduce this item and then introduce other members of the panels here. Um, and what we will do is uh, go to 10 o'clock tonight. I'm sure it will take every bit of that. Uh, this, I'll just sec Bob, yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll probably take a break in between and I don't know when we'll get to public comment, but we will get in that if possible. Uh, Bob. Uh, do we have to pass a resolution to do this by Zoom? No, we don't. Thank you. So um, in any case, um, we'll start with uh, Mr. Wolf, who will introduce this item and then proceed to uh, Sean Kinnick's probably. Great, um, one second. So thanks uh, Chairman Chase, Vice, Vice Chair Metcalf and uh, commissioners. Um, I'm uh, excited to be able to present to, uh, to you this item this evening. Um, I think uh, the prior hotel proposal was the first project I had to pleasure of working on when I started as the planning and building director for the town. So it's it's really been um, a long time coming here. Um, that's just, uh, and that was back in 2014. So um, I'm here tonight. I will be turning this presentation over to Sean Kenning's uh, contract planner for the uh, town of Corte Madera, who uh, many of you, uh, if not all of you, know very well, has worked on the prior, um, some prior applications and projects for the town over the last many years. Um, as you'll see in the presentation and the staff report we prepared for you um, this evening, uh, really staff believes uh, this proposal that you'll be seeing tonight and that is in your staff report uh, that it, it's been responsive to the community and commission concerns that were expressed back in 2017 uh, when uh, the prior version of, of the project was last um, seen by this commission, um, other than the, the study session um, that happened earlier or about a year ago. Um, and I'm, I'm going to interrupt because somebody's got a microphone that's picking up typing sound. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know who that is. Uh, we have a fair number of panelists, but uh, somebody has been typing religiously here. So, okay, seems to be gone. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. 
No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, um, it's back. Hmm. It's not you. No, I know that. No, it's not okay. me, but maybe there's some other somebody else on mute or not on mute. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, we'll we'll try again. Um well, I think I was saying so essentially, um, you know, as you'll see in the staff report, and uh, you know, staff believes this proposal that you'll see tonight is responsive to community and commission concerns that were expressed back in 2017 when when the project was before the prior version of the project was before the commission. Um, and and also significantly, it's it's very responsive to the town's hotel bonus ordinance that was adopted in the summer of 2020 and also the town's mx1 zoning district regulations adopted in 2016 which um, you know from my perspective and i think all of our staff's perspective is very exciting to see all of our collective work the commissions included pay off with a, a comprehensive proposal um, such as this um, and, and just this would be the first project under each of these two town ordinances. Um, so just to highlight some of the key differences from the prior proposal, obviously, uh, most significantly, this project would retain the on-site pond that exists at the site today. Not only that, it would enhance the pond habitat and uh, develop um, public amenities surrounding the pond, including some new landscape paths, benches, interpretive signage, and public parking spaces that essentially create a, a new public space for the town residents and hotel guests. Um, there's a new project design that incorporates more modern high quality finishes and works with the site's physical constraints rather than against them, resulting in a unique building shape and identity. There's certainly more details incorporated into this design, um, some more nuanced facade treatments, use of planar changes to break up massing, while still stepping uh, the project down and well back from Camel Vista Boulevard. Um, more detailed energy and resource efficiency program um, with a defined uh, solar array, uh, panel array on the rooftops. 14 EV charging ready parking spaces, laundry water reuse system, and also a more defined community access program for community groups to utilize meeting rooms and potentially utilize the space during times of emergencies. Um, and while this was also part of the prior proposals, I, I personally think the most, maybe the most significant physical improvement of this proposal is the improvements to the Tamil Vista Boulevard frontage, which really will take a, 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 a three to four foot wide sidewalk and create a much more generous and inviting pedestrian amenity and space uh, along Tamil Vista Boulevard for a significant stretch of that boulevard consistent with the, the MX1 district um, regulations. Uh, underground and utility poles. There will also be uh, modifications to Madera Boulevard to make that a safer pedestrian um, access way to the intersection. Um, and then finally, it shouldn't be overlooked that this is a smaller project in terms of the number of rooms and overall square footage of the hotel than prior versions of the project. And it's now single branded rather than dual branded. Some of the things that really uh, were significant comments from members of the public last time around. So uh, I'll hand it over to Sean in a second, but just wanted to thank the applicant team for their persistence, um, really reconsidering the possibilities at this site. Bringing a new, uh, bringing in a new team, and, and thoughtfully trying to address uh, concerns that have been raised in the past, and, and also really um, methodically going through the requirements of the hotel bonus floor area, not only the technical requirements but process requirements as well. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Sean Kennings, and have him uh, provide a staff presentation, and uh, we also um, have a uh, Christine Gaspar. Of the town's secret consultant um, on uh, this this meeting and this Zoom um, call. Uh, Christine worked with us on the CEQA analysis for the most recently for the Robin Drive uh, residential uh, project. 
and uh, she's available, obviously, and Danforth as well is, is on the um, uh, with us tonight as well. So with that, uh, we'll all be available um, for questions later in the presentation. Uh, with that, I'll hand it over to um, Sean. Sean, take it away. Thanks, Adam. Uh, Chair Chase, members of the commission, I'm Sean Kennings, a contract planner with LAK Associates. Um, as Adam said, this is a uh, planning commission hearing for the redevelopment of the Corte Madera Best Western to a residence in uh, consideration of conditional use permit with a hotel floor area bonus, a consideration of preliminary precise plan, design review, and a sign permit. Um, just make sure that this is working. Uh, again, the the main tenant of this project essentially is being able to make the findings for the hotel floor area bonus uh, pursuant to the ordinance that was passed last summer in 2020. Part of that is that the applicant was required to have a community meeting, which they did in October of 2020, and a planning com commission review last January. Uh, the applicant took uh, comments from both those meetings made revisions, submitted their application last spring. Um, and here we are um, reviewing the project now. Um, so we'll receive all the information, take public comment, and then consideration of the three draft resolutions. Uh, the first one for the initial study and the mitigation monitoring uh, program pursuant to CEQA. The second one is the use permit and floor area bonus. And then the last one is the uh, preliminary precise plan design review and site permit. Uh, one of the reasons for the preliminary and precise plan review is due to the Baylands uh, natural habitat uh, overlay district, which requires approval of a preliminary and precise plan. I'll run through the project very quickly uh, and let the applicant um, who has a presentation go through the, the very specifics of the design, uh, the massing, the architecture, material selection. Uh, again, this is owned by Renaissance Hotels. It's a 5.53 acre property, currently mixed use commercial general plan. And it is in the MX1 mixed use Tamil Vista district. Uh, currently there is a 110 room hotel, Best Western, a detached restaurant, a pool, uh, and the and the uh, mentioned uh, 0.64 acre pond. Uh, the totality of the pond is about 0.81 acres, but the, the water portion is uh, 0.64 acres. Uh, in addition, they have 188 parking spaces. As Adam mentioned, there was a previous iteration of a redevelopment for the site uh, that spanned between 2014 and 2017. Uh, the project was uh, more dense or, or more intense than there was allowed during the previous zoning, um, which required general plan and zoning amendments. Um, there was a request for a new land use designation. Uh, there was a very significant environmental review process pursuant to CEQA that included an EIR. EIR was never certified, uh, but many issues uh, around that project were never resolved. Uh, causing the applicant to withdraw um, that project. Specifically, there were some issues with the scale and architecture uh, and the filling of the pond and the, the redesigning of the pond. Um, and as Adam mentioned, no, no decision was ever made on that project um, until uh, here we are tonight. Uh, real quickly to go through the FAR bonus ordinance that was passed last summer. It allows for hotels in the C4, C3 district uh, on sites greater than one acre. Um, applicants have to have these community meetings and the preliminary hearings to go through uh, public comments before submitting their application. The FAR bonus requires enhanced findings related to design and aesthetics, environmental sustainability, community integration, and enhancements to public realm. If you make all those findings, you could get up, up to a maximum bonus from 0.34 FAR currently to a maximum of 0.7 based on a scoring system that allows you to get there. In addition, you can have a max height of up to 47 feet 
uh, which is currently uh, 35 feet in the uh, C3 district. The FAR bonus uh, requires planning permission approval and approval of those findings to allow for the project to exceed 0.34 FAR. Uh, it also allows, uh, requires the design review and the use permit approvals, which are before you tonight. Um, and again, the, the preliminary proposal that was, that was previously seen about this time last year uh, gives the applicant the direction for achieving that desired bonus. And the four, um, the four uh, areas with which they require approval are architecture, design, and site planning, environmental sustainability, community integration, and the public realm of which the applicant is, is requesting a 0.29 bonus over the 0.34. I will note that that would get them to 0.63. We'll go through that later where they only need 0.58. Moving quickly to the proposed project, it's a total redesign of the existing facility with the exception of the pond, uh, proposing a new 149 room hotel, approximately 118,000 square feet, uh, a maximum of four stories uh, at the eastern or rear of the property closest to Highway 101 with a max height of 47 feet. There'll be 169 parking spaces of which some of those will be EV compatible. Um, again, they're requiring the FAR bonus. Uh, so there are enhanced findings, we'll go through that. Uh, they're incorporating bird safe design um, features that were included in the staff report. They're including uh, renovations or modifications to the pond, excuse me, enhancements to the pond, uh, removing invasive species, uh, planting natives, um, not touching the pond itself, the water area, but, uh, but enhancing sort of the vegetation around it. Uh, there's a large outdoor um, facility for pool and uh, fire pits, social spaces. There's a bicycle share program included in this proposal. Also uh, hotel and transportation shuttles for guests to various businesses uh, and commercial areas. Uh, it includes a laundry reuse system for recycling water. There are conference and meeting rooms included in the proposal that will also be accessible to the public. Uh, this proposal also includes a uh, roof mounted solar system, 380 panels and backup batteries in an emergency. Um, the proposed project will include uh, at a maximum 358 guests at, at total occupancy, although it should be noted that the hotel would rarely be uh, maxed out at, at that many people at one time. Uh, there would be 75 full-time employees, um, and that would be within three shifts, 20 employees at one time. Uh, we would note that although we don't look at this from a CEQA metric um, for impacts, the, the project um, environmental discussion for transportation did include, there would be a, a, a total of 658 vehicle trips per day, but that's only 28 uh, in the a.m. and 29 in the in the p.m. and that means cars coming and going during sort of the peak rush hours between eight and eight and ten and and usually four and six in the afternoon. Um, and again, there's landscaping improvements, uh, new sidewalks, new pedestrian improvements along Tamil Vista, and new pedestrian improvements along Madera Boulevard. This slide is showing you essentially the, the original um, building configuration here in these sort of hatched areas and then the new proposal and the sort of U-shaped thing in the center of the project site. It should be noted that it is removing uh, existing structures from the Tamil Vista, pulling it back away from Tamil Vista and residential uh, neighborhood across the street. Here are the proposed elevations. I'm gonna let the applicant speak to the material choices and, and the architectural style. Uh, this is a view here, uh, looking from Madeira north to the property. Uh, so you have three story elevations at the front with some four stories in the rear. This is the elevation looking from Highway 101, mostly four story elevations on this side. Um, and then Southwest and East, you can see there's lower, lower elevations uh, and a pretty significant setback from, from Tamil Vista here um, along the southwest side. 
and you can see that open area in the middle of the site from the east elevation. Um, here's the, the existing freestanding stein that will be renovated to, um, to the new branding. Here are some of those views, again, looking at Madeira towards Mount Tamalpais, you can see three and, store, three and four story elements. Um, here's an image of your new monument sign on the building um, and a rendering what you might see coming into Court of Madeira at the Madeira exit, uh, traveling south. Uh, the material selection, uh, the architects um, brought materials and elements that they feel are influential from, from around Port of Madeira and the Bay Area, including composite wood, formed concrete, stucco. Uh, and again, they will speak to the materials. The landscape plan, uh, includes trying to preserve as much of the on-site vegetation as possible. Some of the uh, some of the rather large mature vegetation, uh, especially along the north property line, uh, around the pond, uh, and some of the bigger trees to incorporate them into the uh, parking areas. Uh, this plan does include, uh, like we said, a, an enhancement to the pond area. You can see there is a public pedestrian path planned along the eastern edge of the pond with uh, availability for public parking here. Um, and, and this path, although it doesn't connect here, allows for navigation along the outside of the property uh, for public enjoyment. Um, the plan also includes pedestrian improvements as discussed and required along Tamil Vista, uh, a very um, robust planting plan, uh, separation from the street, a large ample sidewalk, uh, privacy fence, and bioretention. Um, here along Madeira, there's a, a reconfigured pedestrian access sending pedestrians uh, south and west along a crossing through the parking lot, uh, and then an enhanced landscape um, area to funnel folks towards the uh, Madeira Tamil Vista intersection. Uh, and this landscaping will be bumped out uh, from the existing condition um, to create, create more visibility for pedestrians in this location uh, in an attempt to get them pedestrians from crossing the street uh, right there at the entrance. Uh, the applicant worked with uh, ESA, uh, an environmental consulting firm, and the Audubon Society to come up with a Pond restoration plan, again, removing invasive species, uh, retaining as much of the mature vegetation as possible, uh, a planting plan that includes uh, new natives um, and areas for, um, you know, preserved for, for heron roosting and, and other, other species, bird species that, that enjoy the pond. Uh, nothing is planned for the pond itself. Um, no kind of water enhancements, trying to stay away from from the actual water line. Um, so moving on to, to the floor area bonus for the project. Again, there are four specific areas with which they are requesting points. Uh, architecture, design, and site planning, they're requesting 12 points. Um, staff finds that the applicant has addressed this uh, through the design and the material selection. Uh, they're also asking for um, a total of eight points when it comes to environmental sustainability. This is through their uh, tier one compliance, um, as well as their gray water reuse system, their bike share program, and their local shuttle, as well as the um, solar panels on top of the building. Community integration, uh, they're asking for six points total. Um, this would be including the dedication of interior space for community rooms available for the public, uh, in addition to the habitat preservation of the pond area. They're also including, although it's not required or, or, or um, accepted, I guess, by the Red Cross, they are uh, proposing that the hotel can be used in an emergency uh, as a as a command center or uh, as a refuge. Um, so out of, out of the total uh, points here, there's three for the interior space, three for the pond habitat, 
and two for the uh, emergency response, but they're only asking for six points total. Uh, and then the public realm, uh, they can get a total of six points, um, although they're only asking for three, four. The pedestrian improvements along Tamla Vista, which includes undergrounding utility poles, um, upgrades to the right of way, and uh, dedication of 15 feet of that frontage on Tamla Vista for the pedestrian uh, improvements. So this is the, the sort of matrix that um, the available points on the left, their requested points in the middle, and then staff uh, after review of the project, um, basically generally in agreement with, with their proposal. Again, I will note that they're asking for 29 bonus points. They only need 24. Um, so their proposal of 118,000 square feet um, will be memorialized in the in the resolutions and the conditions. Uh, so they're not getting a, a, a bonus of, of five points to uh, make the project bigger. Um, this is a slide just to to confirm what some of the other jurisdictions here in Marin County have for hotel floor area. As you can see, San Rafael has exempted uh, FAR for hotels. Uh, where San Anselmo goes up to a maximum of two, Novato has a 1.2, Sausalito has a 1.3. Um, so the the 0.58 that that is proposed is sort of well within what other communities see. Um, and again, here are some of the other hotels and their square footage and their FAR um, throughout Marin County. Again, this project. Um, currently right now is, is 0.42 if you include the pond and their proposal of 0.58 is, is well within uh, some of the other jurisdictions. Um, as part of the project, obviously the, the applicant was required to have those uh, two preliminary meetings um, in October of last year and again, or excuse me, in October of 2020, it's already 2022, uh, in January of last year. And the, the applicant has continued to engage the, the public, including the Audubon, uh, members of the, um, the community, um, and has, has incorporated public comment as part of their design. Uh, Adam mentioned that uh, GHD prepared the environmental document. Uh, for this project, it was an initial study mitigated negative declaration. Uh, as part of the review, GHD was able to uh, retain a lot of the uh, existing regulations and standard BMPs for construction and operational activities where they could. They also tiered off the hotel floor area bonus initial study mitigated negative declaration and were able to incorporate some of those mitigation measures from that document into this one. So as part of their review for this project, uh, those impacts uh, that were potentially significant were able to be reduced to less than significant with the mitigation measures that are contained in the document, uh, including um, mitigation measures for biological resources, cultural resources, geology and soils, hazardous materials, traffic and transportation, and travel impacts. Also, GHD received three comment letters on the initial study. Uh, and prepared response to comments document that's included uh, as part of the staff report. These are the key mitigation measures that were included in that document. Uh, a lot of them are, are uh, responsive to construction related impacts. Um, for instance, preventing disturbance to roosting bats that, that includes a pre-construction survey to make sure there are no sensitive species in any trees prior to construction. Um, some of the other uh, cultural resources and tribal resources is in the event of uh, disturbance of unknown resources underground. Um, and the traffic hazards during construction is to make sure that there are um, adequate uh, safety measures in place during construction. Uh, since the publishing of the staff report, uh, there have been um, just some a, a couple additional comments just to make sure that the 2021 study session, um, that document, that link is in the staff report. Uh, the initial study and MMRP with the technical studies 
uh, is in the staff report. Um, although if the technical studies are not in the staff report, they are also on the website, the project website. Um, in addition, the conditions of approval are at the end of the uh, staff report. Uh, since publishing the staff report, we, we did get some new renderings from the applicant, which you will see tonight. Uh, we did get some uh, comments from some of the commissioners, including Commissioner Metcalf, uh, regarding uh, some design consideration for the entrance canopy. Um, we've also made some revisions um, to some typos and some, some changes in the resolutions. Um, so with that, as I mentioned before, staff is in support of the project, can make the findings for the initial study, can make the findings for the use permit and the bonus, floor area bonus, and can make the findings for the uh, preliminary precise plan, design review and sign permit. And so staff is uh, supportive of the project um, should the commission uh, decide to, to vote on it. You have three options. You can approve all three resolutions as is. Uh, you can approve the resolutions uh, as presented with, with revisions or conditions uh, per your recommendations, or you can request staff to respond uh, and come back to a, a planning commission at a later date. Um, so with that, I will conclude my presentation. I'm sure you have questions of staff uh, before we turn it over to the applicant. And, and just one point on the resolutions. Um, I think I may have mentioned a, a year ago when we were going through this process that this would be uh, a decision by the Planning Commission and not need to go to the Town Council. Um, however, um, because the site is actually in the Baylands Risk Zone and, and Natural Habitat Overlay District, it does require uh, precise and preliminary plans which uh, by ordinance and by the municipal code must go to the town council for approval. So um, that is why the resolutions as written are uh, asking or, or the, the commission's role will be to recommend, make a recommendation to the town council in this instance. And that's how the um, resolutions have been written. Okay, I think uh, with that, um, Peter, we're, we're happy to answer questions that you may have of staff, or if you'd like to do it as a group um, and go to um, the applicant or they're, they're on standby waiting to present as well. Uh, Peter, I think you're, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, first off, I'm going to uh, ask that if anybody who is typing, uh, refrain from typing because it's still coming through somehow in our uh, uh, speakers, and headphones, etc. So um, that's a distraction. That I would and that, like is to... anybody else getting? I'm not getting the typing. Is anybody else getting typing? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's a feedback loop on your um, yeah microphone. Is probably a result of the move. Just. Things not all ironed out yet. It's only oh. when Adam speaks. Aha, oh. Adam. I can assure you, my hands. I'll I'll do this. I'm not I'm not typing. I'm not sure why that's happening. It must be a. Uh, it's how the uh, system. The, yeah, it must maybe with the move we haven't uh, ironed out all the details here. I'm sorry. So somebody is in the background typing away, and I don't know who it is, but um, it's like there's a speaker over or a microphone open somewhere that is uh, uh, coming through. Um, in any case, so I'm going to ask the commissioners here one by one if they have some preliminary questions that they would like to get off to uh, Sean Cunnings or to uh, Adam about the project before we take it to the presentation. Um, Mr. Rizzo, do you have anything that you feel like you want to ask at this point? Um, yeah, I got I got a few questions. Um, how um, how tall is the town center in comparison, just so we get a feel for the scale of the back side of the hotel? Um, do we know how tall that is, or? Sure. Yeah, the, the office building structure at the town center is approximately 60 feet tall. 
Okay. And like forty and, and forty seven feet also, I should note, is the height of the RH building. Okay. And and this project, I was just looking at the sections. Is it it is it to the roof line or or the parapet of the equipment that we're looking at forty seven feet? Parapet and height limit. It's the indicator so far away, it's hard to tell. I believe it's to the, the roof eave and then the parapet would exceed and go above that, obviously, which is an allowance um, by code, but I'm not sure where the call it is. Sean, do you have any other? Yep, yeah, per the drawing, Jim, I don't know if you can see that. It says the, the elevator oh. overrun is 54 feet. Yeah, I mean, that's in the middle. You're not gonna see it anyway. I was just, I'm just curious, just trying to get my, my bearings about the scale. Um, and was there any other design moves uh, interior wise? Like I know that I think last time there wasn't a bar and a restaurant. Is, is there is there any food service uh, for being proposed? There is a breakfast option, but no restaurant. No restaurant. Um, and what are uh, what are the considerations for the employee parking? I think that's incorporated on site. That's, in, that's incorporated on site. Um, and then I know uh, there was some talk about the fence um, that's facing Camel Vista, maybe being reduced to four feet. Um, and it was on six feet on the plans, that, that particular section there. Yeah, that's right. Um, we, we created a condition uh, in the staff report that uh, requires them to make it four feet. Okay. And uh, those, those, uh, the vegetation is, is, is that hedge going to be a continuous hedge? Uh, so it will kind of prohibit, um, you know, lights from cars that are being parked uh, into the neighbor's house. You know, those hedges that are right in front of the, the fence. You can go yeah, back. Yeah, I would let the applicant speak to that, but as you, okay. can, the landscape plan, you can see there's, there's a continuous line of vegetation along the parking areas. All right. But the fence, certainly the, the fence um, intention of lowering that fence height, uh, it's already at a little bit higher elevation, but it certainly the intention was to limit the lights as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't want to go lower that the lights would actually um, yeah. go above it. But I, at the same time, the idea was not to create a very tall wall like. Yeah. Um, um, environment for pedestrians on Camel Vista Boulevard. Okay. And um, the, the graphic with the the FAR on, on the other towns, um, are, are we the only town that has created a, a, a program for, for bonuses um, based on, I, I know, I think we might have gotten over this when we, <clears throat> when we passed the resolution. Um, but I was just curious, some of those are over, um, over one, and I didn't know if that was just something, uh, if they had any bonus uh, criteria or that was just, you know, no, they were well, had the ability to build to, up to that FAR. Sure, I think I can answer that. Um, the, it's, they're not explicitly bonuses. So I would say the direct answer is, yeah, I think we are the only one with a bonus structure, but for example, San Rafael has intentionally essentially exempted hotels from FAR, which in some ways is a, an equivalent measure. And some of these other cities have specifically allowed higher FARs for hotels in certain areas of town, but not necessarily through a bonus mechanism. Okay. Um, and then the last question I have is um, the path that runs around um that runs around the, the the pond is 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 there any public right of way space where that can be continued behind the other building or does that go dead end into another property it yeah, that, that area right there yeah it terminates on another property and there's a parking lot here and there was a at one point a discussion about continuing it around the around the pond but that would obviously impact too much of the existing vegetation, especially where some of the sensitive species spend a lot of their time. So this was this was sort of the the best solution. Okay. 
That, that's all I have, um, Chair Chase. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, Phyllis Metcalf, do you have any questions that you would like to uh, ask the staff? One that I just want to clarify to be sure that I understand it. For the community integration, that doesn't mean that any member of the public can go in and use those outdoor amenities. It is groups that have made reservations, et cetera. Is that correct? That's right. The community integration, as you can see here, is requires advanced reservations for the meeting rooms. Okay. I think it would be, uh, again, I'll let the applicant speak to it, but I imagine it's a, uh, there's a reservation base. There might be a fee structure, um, but there they would be allowed to use the community rooms inside, uh, but not, no. not the pool. There's no, um, you know, I know the previous hotel, you could yes. rent the pool or whatever. Well, under state law would require having a lifeguard on duty at all times. So it makes no sense to have it open to the public. Would, the cost would be ridiculous. The other question I have, and it's more of a comment at this time, and it goes back to the fence that uh, Peter had asked a question about before the meeting, and Adam responded by saying it was to reduce it to four feet in height. I would like us, after we have the presentation from uh, Garrett and his people, to discuss that, because my personal preference would be to keep it at six, and I think it would be good for us to discuss the reasons why four feet, why six feet. You know, just have that open at the time, even though it is written as a condition in the resolution. Okay, thank you, Phyllis. And that's uh, okay, very good. Uh, Margaret, uh, do you have any questions for staff that you'd like to have answered? Um, I do. My first, I, I'm, I'm a little confused about the, um, the vehicle trips and that uh, those numbers that you were talking about, um, there were going to be an increase of 658 vehicle trips, but during the peak hours, there was only going to be uh, 29 or 24 trips. So that leaves 500, more than 500 trips in the middle of the day. I think I need a better explanation of that. So it's essentially the vehicle trips is throughout the day uh, and the peak hours are, are the ones that uh, for CEQA purposes we consider as to an impact to your typical traffic commuting time. And so the 650 basically divided in two, uh, 300 and change, those are in and out trips. In and out of the parking lot? That's right. So imagine somebody might arrive to the hotel prior to the peak hour time. They park their car, they go in, then they may leave for whatever work-related thing. Then they may come back, then they may go again. So the, the, the vehicle trips in and out of the, of the facility is spread out through the day. And it's not just, um, not just during the peak hour. So obviously for a hotel, it's different from an office building. It's different from a single family home. Uh, so you may have more vehicle trips after peak hour uh, because you're having people who are staying at the facility. Uh, maybe they're going to San Francisco for whatever reason, or maybe they're uh, on the weekend or for whatever reason, they're, they're coming back after the typical commute hour. And so I noticed um, you have 169 parking spaces, there are 149 rooms, that's a difference of 20, and you have 20 staff on each shift. Is, is that the way you figured it out? Well, so um, there is the, the code for required parking for a hotel, and I believe they are over that requirement. Um, and then as far as employee parking and guest parking, again, I would leave it to the applicant to explain how that meets uh, their needs. And I would also like to have um, Christine, Christine Gaspar is on the, on the phone, our CEQA consultant can speak a little bit to the vehicle trip um, travel. Uh, Commissioner Bendell, if that's helpful, I'd like to okay. provide some additional clarification on that. 
Christine, can you unmute and put your uh, vi video on, please? Hi. Can you hear me, Evan? Yes. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, <clears throat> I did just want to first note that the TRIPS, you know, are conservative, uh, uses the IT ITE trip generation rates, which is typical. That's what you do in a in a traffic study um, such as this. Um, but you know they are known to be uh, conservative, so I did want to throw that throw that out there. And um, what Sean was saying uh, is correct. Um, they would be distributed uh, out throughout the day. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily have them uh, during the the typical, you know, peak hour commute that you look at to to meet whether or not you're um, causing a problem with your uh, gen general plan policies for your for your LOS. You know, when you look at the the um, the LOS standards at your intersections. Um, so when you're typically looking at the peak hour, so these trips are, are different than, you know, a commercial or residential facility. They're, they're happening throughout the day and into the evening. Okay, thank you. Um, go, going back to my other question about the parking spots, does the 169 include the public parking spots near the pond? Yes, that's correct. And you said that th those are four spots, is that right? Uh, per the plan, it looks to be about five spaces. Okay. I had one other um, question and it, I think that's a particularly difficult on and off ramp right, right there. And I think it's dangerous. And in uh, the staff report, um, on page three, it said, in practice, however, pedestrians have been observed crossing Madeira Boulevard between Tamil Vista and US-1 without utilizing the crosswalks. Um, I, I think that's just, well, I'd like to know what, um, how that can be mitigated. Yeah, so I, I could speak to that, and this has been a, something that we've really focused on. Um, a couple of things that the project's improving about that. Um, one is the, the actual sidewalk improvements that Sean went over in his presentation, which I touched on. So in the, in the right sort of circle here, um, uh, there's a few things. One is currently, if you, if you look at where the wayfinding out of the hotel is, it direct it almost directs people directly to the um, western entrance of this hotel or the existing hotel, and doesn't provide really any access, um, sidewalk access in a in a coherent way. And so people just are generally dropped from the front of the hotel into the middle of that pavement and then out the street. So. Importantly, a couple things. One is um, the new uh, landscaping and wayfinding and signage will, as you come out of the hotel, you'll be directed to this crosswalk essentially that will lead you to essentially the sidewalk, which starts on the interior of the property. And so somebody following that will, will sort of come out to uh, the throat of the inner of the driveway and they'll see uh, the, the curb is going to be pushed out and, and into the street from the existing condition and heavily landscaped. And we've even, uh, there's, there's um, a, a potential for even having a, a steel posts and, and a guardrail type of uh, structure in that vegetation that would preclude people from uh, crossing at that location. Uh, and then there would also be signage directing people to uh, move further um, to the west into the actual intersection across um, the Tamil Vista and the Dara intersection. Uh, secondly, I think there's also another access point that's going to lead pedestrians directly out to Tamil Vista Boulevard, which is not shown. Yes, that, that location as well. So if you're actually in the outdoor amenity area, and you're choosing essentially to go out to uh, town center, you would actually 
get can get right out to Tamil Vista Boulevard uh, and then out to the intersection that way. Um, there's there's also uh, uh, the, the safety is enhanced with the um, elimination of the yeah the easternmost driveway which currently exists so drivers coming off will actually have better sight distance uh, and will be able to um, see vehicles and also pedestrians um, uh, in, in a way that they aren't currently able to do um, the bumping out of the curb also has the effect of some ability to trap some traffic calming uh, because it will now take away the parking lane um, to the west of the actual driveway. Um, there's a number of things um, that we we feel that the, the actual conditions are much improved over the existing condition and pedestrians will really be directed to the existing intersection, which is what we're trying to have people uh, you know, do rather than cross directly across the street um, in, the, in the middle of that five lane uh, road. Um, so, in any case, those are a few of the things uh, that uh, mitigate that concern with this project. Has the town ever thought about putting up a traffic light there? Well, there's there's a variety of different options that the town has considered at the intersection of Tam You're talking about Tamil Vista. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, let me clarify. Where do you mean? J just, I'm not exactly sure right now, but but just a traffic light so that pedestrians would have um, you know, time to cross before uh, traffic, uh, before oncoming traffic uh, started flowing. Not at that location, no. I mean, it, it's basically di directing, really the solution is to direct people to cross at the actual intersection of Camel Vista and um, Madero. There has been, discussions about how to improve that intersection itself to make it uh, a better for vehicular traffic, but also for uh, pedestrians and bicycles as well. Um, two different options have been proposed, essentially uh, either roundabout configuration or um, some modifications to the existing uh, turn lanes and uh, uh, sort of reconfiguring the existing striping and some of the um, curbs at the intersection to improve those things. But those are uh, not something, things that are, those are town projects that are sort of, we're sort of still evaluating in, into the future, um, but uh, are definitely on the town's radar with respect to that intersection. Thanks, Adam. Margaret, anything else you wanna ask at this moment? Nothing further, thanks. Okay, uh, Dr. Bundy, uh, how about you? Do you have any questions? Uh, no questions for the staff. Okay, all right. Um, I have uh, just a couple of questions because I think the staff report is fairly complete here. Uh, on page 16 of the uh, staff report, um, it says gray water reuse system for laundry uh, feasibility to be evaluated. Um, is it an evaluation or is it a certainty that the system would be in place? It's a certainty that the system will be in place. I think it's a, it's an evaluation of the, you know, how they do the water and what's the, the actual uh, savings. Um, you know, and, and because it, obviously it's an integrated system with, with the hotel operations and irrigation and so on and so forth. Okay, great. Um, so I think it's time. Uh, for... Sorry, Peter, if I can just yeah. respond to that a little bit more deep uh, in detail. Um, and, and I think the applicant should really speak to that question um, because there's been uh, MMWD is the one that has the ordinance with respect to gray water and gray water used for landscaping. And um, they would require it, but that's a discussion between the hotel operator and um, MMWD. And there's also been some discussion about whether that's even appropriate at this location, given their habitat and, and, and other things going on at the, at the, uh, on the site. 
Um, there is going to be the laundry recycling of water and the, and the reuse of water in that capacity. It's not necessarily a gray water. I, I actually, I'll let the applicant speak to whether that's technically gray water system, but it is a water recycling use. And then I would, I would really defer to uh, the applicant to speak to um, their conversations or any conversations they've had with MMWD regarding the gray water um, ordinance and, and the top, whether that's feasible in their discussions or, or complicated by other factors. Okay, thank you. All right, so it's time for uh, the applicant to make a presentation. So um, who's going to start this uh, off for the applicant? Looks like Garrett signing That off. would be me, yes. And um, Rory, if you could go ahead and share the presentation. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Garrett Greeler with Reddits and Hotels. And um, it's good to be in front of the Planning Commission uh, again. It, it's certainly been a while. Um, and it's also great to see that the composition of the commission hasn't changed. Um, our team hasn't changed as well. Um, joined this evening by Corey Kreff with Access GFA uh, and also uh, Roy O'Connell, also with Access GFA. They're our project architects. Um, also presenting this evening will be Tom Holloway with KLA Landscape Architecture. Um, our presentation this evening is, is really focusing on um, answering, addressing really questions and comments uh, from the Planning Commission and the public during our workshop about a year ago. Uh, but because it's been some time, we're certainly going to review the project in, in a fair amount of detail. We're um, Certainly very excited about the project still um, after all this time. Um, and um, we hope you, you, you feel good about the direction we've gone uh, over the past year. Um, at this point, I'd like to introduce Corey uh, to say just a few things. Corey, are you there? Uh, yes, hi, can yeah. you hear me? Okay. Yes. Good evening. Good evening, commissioners and members of the public. My name is Corey Kreth, and I'm a founding principal of Axis GFA Architecture and Design. We're pleased to be here to present the proposed project for your consideration. Tonight represents the culmination of a long journey, as you've heard, where so many passionate members of the community have given input and shared ideas on how to shape the best project possible. Shortly, you will hear from Rory O'Connell, who has led the design effort. But I first wanted to just share with you how close of a personal connection I have to what we're gonna be asking you to support. I lived in Corte Madera from 1990 until 2001. And during that span, I raised my two daughters, Samantha and Lauren, uh, who attended Neil Cummins and Hall Middle School and graduated from Redwood High School. And I still have many close friends who call this town home. Um, I'm particularly proud of the work that you'll be seeing and we're excited to share it with you. So without further ado, I'll turn it back over to Garrett. Thank you, Corey. Um, so first a, a quick project overview. Um, just to refresh everyone's memory, we are proposing 149 guest rooms and a residence in brand hotel. Uh, residence Inn is a, is a Marriott brand. It's one of their upscale hotel brands and includes extended stay or it really is ex exclusively extended stay accommodations, which means that all of the rooms will have small efficiency kitchens um, conducive to, to longer term stays. It doesn't mean though that all our guests would be long term stay guests. In fact, we would anticipate about only 10% of our guests to be staying uh, beyond 30 days. And certainly the majority of our guests would stay less than five days. So, so in many ways, it really is a, a traditional hotel. We are planning about 3,500 square feet of meeting space, uh, which is comparable to the 3,000 square feet of meeting space we currently have at the Corte Madera Inn. That much meeting space is unusual for residents in, but we see it really as an important part of this project. Um, we are, we would be serving breakfast to our hotel guests. We also have a bar uh, serving light snacks in the evening, but the facility will not have a, a full service restaurant. 
we understand that a high quality design is, is certainly very important to the commission and to the public. Uh, we are committed to that. And, and certainly the project that we're presenting this evening um, far exceeds Marriott standards and requirements. And, and we're comfortable with that because we recognize that community acceptance is really critical to the long-term success of the project. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, Sean talked in, in some detail about the, the hotel land use ordinance. And again, we wanted to discuss this really in context of, of, of what we've changed, changes we've made since, since our last meeting. Um, I'll discuss the two, first two sections, environmental sustainability and community integration. And Rory will touch on the last two, public realm, site planning and design. Next slide. Okay, environmental sustainability. Um, at our last meeting, Amy Ryder, our, our Cal Green consultant, talked in, in detail about Cal Green and our tier one compliance efforts. And, and those standards are, are really demanding um, and comprehensive. And so we're, we're feeling good about that effort and the sustainability efforts we put, we put forth there. Um, also, uh, as voluntary options, and Sean discussed some of this earlier, but here's a little more detail. Uh, we are planning a PV solar system. Um, our preliminary design is 380 panels covering the rooftop. Um, we believe we'll generate about 250, uh, two, I'm sorry, 250 kilowatt hours annually, uh, which represents 25 to 30% of the facility's annual demand for electricity. In addition to that, um, on the electrical side, we're planning a guest room energy management system uh, the system will automatically shut off lights and turn down heating and cooling when rooms are unoccupied. Uh, again, a significant saver of electricity. And then finally, uh, on the electrical side, an EV charging stations. We're planning 14 charging stations. In addition, we plan to provide the infrastructure for additional tri charging stations going forward. We um, plan on using natural gas in the facility, but really to a limited degree. Uh, we will have gas dryers and uh, gas hot water heaters uh, and also three outdoor fireplaces. One of the fireplaces is located adjacent to a meeting room. Uh, that fireplace would be used really only for meeting, meet, evening meetings on a request only basis and, and really get limited use. Uh, the other two fireplaces are in the central courtyard one of them is, is really a, a central design feature, uh, but again, the hours would be limited to most likely sunset to about 10 p.m. At a last meeting, the commission expressed an interest about some kind of water reuse system, and I know we've already touched on this a bit already, and, and yes, we are committed to this system. We, tar we targeted laundry because um, that department is really a significant user of water, and we've committed to a system that will recycle 80% of the water from each ship, each load. Uh, annually, that will result in the savings of about 625,000 gallons. To, um, to put that in context, our annual water use in landscaping is projected at about 450,000 gallons. So the water savings from the reuse that water laundry reuse system will exceed the total water demand for irrigation. And lastly here, uh, we plan on uh, making bikes available to guests free of charge uh, for use around town and also will provide a shuttle to guests to and from restaurants, the airport, etc. Next slide. Community integration, three areas here. I know Sean touched on, on each of these, but to provide a little more detail and background, um, go ahead to the next slide. First area, dedication of interior space. We plan to make our meeting rooms available free of charge to qual qualifying organizations, those organizations being local nonprofits, uh, associations, neighborhood groups, et cetera. Uh, that would include a uh, complete meeting room setup, a specified breakdown cleanup and, and full use of the facility. This would be limited to about 20 meetings per year, uh, but certainly if we had requests beyond the 20 meetings, we would, we would be very receptive to that. Uh, but that would be available on a really case-by-case -case basis. And if the town would like, we'd be happy to report that usage annually. annually. Next slide. Okay, the pond, lots of discussions about the pond. Um, at our last meeting, ESA gave a comprehensive 
presentation on our habitat preservation and, and restoration efforts. Um, since the meeting, we have met on site with Barbara Salton and, and Audubon to, to get some feedback. They were generally uh, overall receptive to the restoration plan. Uh, they did express some concern about the pace and um, the, the timing of the plan. It's concern that it could it perhaps interfere with some habitat. So we would be happy to work with Audubon addressing sort of pace and time when it comes to the work done in this area. Audubon had also expressed some concern about the habitat of the black crowned night herons. Um, we have identified trees around the pond where they roost and, and saving those trees is, is part of the project. Also at our hearing, uh, some of the commissioners expressed an interest in public engagement of, of, with the pond and providing a pedestrian path of travel from Campbell Vista to the pond. I believe Sean showed that to you earlier and I, I think Tom will discuss that in more detail later, but we have provided that path of travel to the pond. And we've also provided the additional parking, bench seating, et cetera, in that area, kind of an enhanced pedestrian ex or the yeah, pedestrian experience in, in that area. Um, also, uh, several months ago, uh, we met on site with Pat Rivazio. Pat, um, well, I should say there's an existing berm, sep berm separating Highway 101 and the pond right now, and it, it functions as, as a pretty effective sound barrier. And, Pat had suggested that we increase the height of this berm in areas where it dips down a bit low and we extend the pond, that berm further to the south, doing so with the hopes of, of creating sort of a quieter environment around the pond. And that is, that it is part of this project. Next slide. And then the last area of community integration, the emergency response resource, which was talked a little bit about earlier, but we plan to enter into an arrangement with the Red Cross to provide the facility in the event of a large scale disaster. Uh, it wouldn't be a formal written arrangement, but, but a, an informal arrangement because that's how they work with, with companies now. Um, but some of the commissioners last meeting suggested that we reach out to local neighborhood groups, uh, perhaps uh, with, with the hope of providing some assistance there. And we have reached out to the Madeira Gardens NRG. Um, that is the NRG covering about 500 homes adjacent to the, the hotel. Um, we've had some, some preliminary discussion with them. Um, they were certainly very interested in the idea of using the hotel as a command center and, and, a, and a gathering spot in the event of, in the event of emergency. We also discussed with them the idea of providing storage for emergency supplies. Currently that's stored at Neil Cummins in a trailer. Um, they like that location, but certainly going forward, if they would prefer to move the supplies, we're certainly receptive to that. Um, and then finally, we talked about the idea of having a block captain, um, which re really would be an important component of the problem of the um, program. It would keep us engaged with the NRG. Um, more recently, the NRG and CERT has expressed an interest in expanding this program beyond just Madeira, Madeira Gardens. Um, we're still working through the details of that, uh, but I'm confident that we'll come up with an arrangement that would really be beneficial to both CERT and the NRG. Next slide. So Rory, I think you are on now. Thank you, Garrett, and um, thank you to the commission um, and to uh, Adam and Sean and to the public for um, coming out again to um, review our project and give us your opinions. And um, we, we really appreciated the input we got in the, the first two sessions. They helped us uh, shape the project. And we're, um, we're hoping to get some great feedback and some support tonight. Uh, for this, for this project we're very excited about. Um, as Sean and Adam touched upon, um, part of the land use ordinance um, FAR bonus requires that we uh, develop a design which is very site specific, um, not a prototype residence in, but really is, is rooted in Corte Madeira um, and will fit in today and, and for a long time. And so, you know, these are the, criteria we used developing the design. Um, we had a very uh, long deck that presented in one of the previous workshops 
explaining our thinking and how we got here. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to kind of abbreviate that and just kind of show you where we got to. Um, and sort of to summarize, the existing is a low building, two stories, pressed to the perimeter of the site. We're proposing a slightly taller building pressed to the center um, and a combination of three and four stories, four towards Highway 101, three towards the neighborhood to sort of provide a, a stepping of the mass, both for variety and also uh, in deference to the residential scale. Um, to further illustrate that, one of, one of the goals we had here was by pressing this project to the center of the site, we didn't want the um, visual bulk perceived from Highway 101 or from across Tunnel Vista to change all that much. So taller building, further away, you know, where you start to see sky from your front window doesn't change all that much. And that was an important criteria developing the massing of the project. We also did shadow studies um, early on and refined as we went along. Um, you know, to be sure that we weren't going to be a, a, a bad neighbor with this project. Um, so, you know, June 21st, best case scenario, really no shadows leaving the site. Uh, December 21st, worst case scenario, by nine o'clock, we're, we're, we're not really shading Tamil Vista and certainly not in the afternoon and evening. I'm um, going to quickly introduce the site plan, turn it over to our landscape architect, Tom, to talk about some of the um, uh, hardscape, softscape elements, but just wanted to highlight a couple of things. Um, the first is, uh, as one of the commissioners mentioned, when we started planning the site, we, we sort of realized in one of the workshops that having an existing curb cut so close to one-on-one is, um, is much too exciting. Uh, and so one that is uh, much closer to Tamil Vista, a single in and out, uh, we hope to reduce some, some potential for traffic conflict there. Um, and then we're, we're keeping the, proposing to keep the entrance of the hotel similar to the location now where it faces Madeira Boulevard. It has a presence, um, less happens along Temel Vista it, it, in, in deference to the residential character of that, of that part of the street. Um, you can see the sort of serpentine shaped building around a courtyard, which um, sort of concentrates activity towards the center of the site again. And then we have a clear zone to the existing pond. There's streetscape improvements along Tamil Vista. There's undergrounding of utilities. We'll show you the impact of that later. Um, and there is also that pedestrian path that doesn't uh, provide a, a lap of the pond, but does allow people to circulate through and around the site. Um, I also want to point out just, it can be hard to, to keep scale with, with some of these drawings, but you know, it's 110 feet from the curb uh, to the corner of the building at this three-story element. It's 100 feet from the curb on Madeira to the first guest room. We really wanted to provide that space um, for landscaping and as a buffer uh, between the building and the neighbors. Uh, with that, Tom, do you want to talk about uh, some of the landscaping? Yeah, thanks. And thank you, commissioners, for, for uh, looking at this project. Um, as Rory touched on, the position of the building um, really provides for an abundance of open space and landscape uh, for this project. And um, one of the things that we really strive to do is create various zones of landscape and activity. Um, so for instance, as discussed, um, we've got the arrival port on the Madero Boulevard side, which then links right through the building into the, the central courtyard that's surrounded mostly by the architecture. And that really provides the, the big guest amenity space that happens. Um, so it really is screened and secluded from the neighboring community by the building itself. The, the way that the building opens up at the northwest corner of the site allows um, some really nice views from that courtyard space and from those guest rooms up to Mount Tamalpais. So as, as uh, Rory mentioned earlier, one of the, the key elements with the design of this is really to embrace and accept Porta Madera and the style and the, and the surrounding landscape is really a key element to the design associated with this project. So um, preserving those views um, is really important. So then as we move away from that, that courtyard space, then it's, it's broken up into a couple other, um, we've got landscape around the, the parking lot, um, which then breaks out further into the perimeter landscape. And as we move away from that core, those landscape spaces become um, less intense, much more naturalistic, really striving to incorporate as much native material, um, adaptive material that's appropriate for the site. 
um, and really low water using plants, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, a key element to the landscape and to the, to the function of the site is that pathway that Rory discussed earlier. It's uh, shown on the plan as a, as a dashed white line, but from, from Tamil Vista, we have a walkway connection that connects off of the sidewalk on Tamil Vista, runs through the project area around the building, and then connects along the, the east side of the project and then runs along the, uh, the existing pond. So with that then, and as it gets on the east side of the project along the Highway 101 frontage, um, where we've, we've gone from a, a concrete pathway to a DG pathway, so it starts to feel much more natural um, and get you into that uh, uh, more habitat and natural uh, environment, runs along the edge. Um, there is some parking that was discussed earlier that is really dedicated for people who want to be able to uh, use the path and, and experience the pond. Um, as mentioned, the berm along 101 um, and meeting on site with Barbara and, and with the city, uh, it was agreed that, uh, yeah, if we can expand that berm a little bit taller and a little bit further to the south, it really provides a nice barrier from the, the 101 freeway. Um, and, and, and along that path, then we've got benches, there's some interpretive panels. Um, so really, um, it, it, it's a completely different environment around there than, than uh Kind of the rest of the, the the more urban core of Corte Madera in that location. As mentioned, it, it is a circular path. You can get right back out onto Tamil Vista, but you are going through the business park, the office buildings to the north side. Um, but that's pretty much how the, the path functions right now. So it's 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 kind of just following the same theme that it was before. Um, just to touch on the public access points that uh, Commissioner uh, Bandel discussed. We do have that, that walkway that goes out to Tamil Vista, and that is really um, from, from guest rooms and from, from guests' point of view, that is one of the quickest ways to get off site. Um, but we will touch on a little bit further the walkway on the south side or uh, on Madera Boulevard and how we've modified that. Um, Rory, if we can go to the next page. Oh, there we are, talking about that, <laughs> that connection. So, um, really one of the, the key elements that happens here then uh, regarding that connection is we do have the sidewalk that crosses, uh, that comes out of the main entry to the building, goes to the west, crosses the drive aisle, and then heads south um, towards town center. But in working with the town, um, we came up with a solution that's been discussed a little bit further, but of, of forcing pedestrians to go along a sidewalk that has a much more robust landscape treatment between the sidewalk and, this, and the roadway that really guides them towards the intersection at uh, Madera and Tamil Vista so that they can cross at a, at a crosswalk instead of uh, running the gauntlet uh, in the middle of the street. As discussed, uh, we would like to treat it with landscape, um, but if something more robust needs to be included, uh, a low fence or something like that, that, that really kind of pushes the guidance, we can do that as well. Um, this, this slide I think is a, is a good, um, example of the uh, kind of the core area of the, the middle of the courtyard and really that guest experience of, of how you come in the main lobby at the front entry that that front entry then connects right through the lobby into the, the main courtyard so the idea with the landscape and the architecture is really to create a seamless transition between interior and exterior um, and uh, and really um, uh, capture that that outdoor experience um, I think next slide, Rory. Um, so just touching on the, the plant material, I discussed a little bit earlier the idea of zoning it, and, and that's very much what we're going to do with the little more intense landscape right around the building, but as we move away, getting into the, uh, the natives. Um, uh, we're looking at a variety of species based on those zones. Um, relying on native adaptive and low water use and low water, uh, low maintenance plant material. Um, the right size plant, um, we're very much looking at dwarf varieties and, um, and, and keeping the plants so that we don't generate a lot of green waste. There'll obviously be a little bit of pruning that happens, uh, but we're not trying to take a plant that wants to be 30 feet tall and keeping it at eight feet tall. Um, Water conservation is extremely important, and we know it's a critical component of, uh, of life in Marin County. Um, 
in, in this project, as an example, um, the Water Efficient Landscape Ordinance for the state of California allows us to use 773,000 gallons of water based on the square footage of landscape. But by the use of um, specific plant material, a very efficient irrigation system, um, our projected water use is almost half of that at 456,000 gallons. Um, and, and, and there might be further reductions as well as we, as we really refine, but we're very focused on reducing the water consumption associated with the landscape. Um, and I just wanted to point out too, that when we get into the renderings a little bit later, you're gonna see some, some plantings and it, it, it really conveys the theme of the project, but not necessarily the specific plants. Um, what you see here in these images are, are really examples of the specific plants that'll be used in the project. And then the next slide is looking at Tamil Vista frontage. Um, I really wanted to stress how, how much space has been provided here. Um, we've really expanded the amount of landscape between the existing curb um, and uh, where the parking is. Um, and, and, and that really is a nod to the residents on the other side of Tamil Vista to be able to give them a, a, a nice environment. So, what we're looking at here, you can, you can see that the building is set back quite a bit from the Tamil Vista frontage. As Rory talked about, uh, it's 90 to 110 feet away. Um, and, uh, um, oops, sorry. And we've uh, increased, the, uh, we've increased the, uh, the usability of the sidewalk along Tamil Vista. So we've taken the, the narrow walk that's there now. We've got a seven foot wide concrete pathway that meanders uh, back and forth with some parkway strips and more landscape space. Um, right now, I think it's, an, it's about six to seven feet wide and what we're proposing here as an additional 15 feet. So the, between the fence that we're, that we're gonna look at and the curb, we've got 21 feet of landscape now that, that proposed, sorry, that existing is about six or seven feet of landscape. So Rory, if you can go to the next slide, it's a cross section um, from Tamil Vista on the left to the hotel on the right. Um, and you can see there's the parkway strip, the seven foot wide sidewalk. And then to touch on, I think it was a commissioner Rizzo that talked about the, um, the hedge or the plant material that runs between the sidewalk and the hotel. Um, the, the concept is that we do wanna have a decent sized material that will um, allow views from the courtyard over the top to Mount Tamil Pius, but from the residents on Tamil Vista looking towards the hotel, they really, it would, it would buffer the views. So you're not seeing the parking, you're not seeing uh, the, the, the lower portions of the hotel, um, but it's not necessarily a continuous hedge of one plant material. It's multiple plant materials that's been designed in such a way that it breaks it up and it, um, it feels much more naturalistic in a, a calm, nice aesthetic walkway um, to walk through. And there is a little bit of a, a grade change that happens between the, the parking lot of the hotel and, and Tamil Vista Street. Um, so in terms of um, the, the, the fence, it's shown at six feet, but if it drops down to four feet, which is shown with that little red dashed line, um, we have no issue with that whatsoever. Um, it'll, it'll still block all the headlights. The plant material does the, most of the job of doing the screening. So if it's, if it's the desire of the commission to lower that fence, um, applicant has no issue with that whatsoever. If you wanna keep it at six feet, uh, that's fine as well. Um, it really is hidden behind that plant material. So um, I don't think it's gonna be a significant element along the walkway. So we're, we're good either way. Um, there is stormwater treatment that happens throughout the site. Um, you can see that here in the, in, the, in the section, we've got a little swale that happens along the parking lot. But that does happen throughout. So um, um, we have, we've divided uh, stormwater treatment throughout the site. I think that covers everything. Rory, I'm going to send it back to you. Thanks, Tom. I'll take it from here. Um, so now we're going to start showing you, um, you know, renderings and elevations of the proposal. Uh, I'm going to start with this existing uh, photograph uh, on Tema Vista, uh, sort of across the street versus what's proposed. Um, and so the things to note here are the undergrounding of utilities, um, that much wider uh, sidewalk landscaping area, the new planting, the new fence, and again, the impact of that you know, 110 feet from the corner of the building to the curb. Um, from our first workshop, 
we identified what we thought was the sort of the vernacular um, of Corte Madeira and West Marin. And these were the elements of architectural design that we identified as being important to either integrate or use as a starting point for our design. Um, and so these are really the themes that, that guided or the elements that guided our design uh, as we developed the massing into to what you're gonna see. Um, we also talked about color. Uh, when we talked to you all last January, we came to you with a, a white building. Um, I think the feeling was that that maybe wasn't the most appropriate uh, thing to, to place on this site. And so we, we've embraced a, a darker palette, um, largely inspired by the West Point Inn, which is one of the first hospitality um, locations in, in Marin County um, and, and a great project. Um, and I'd, I'd like to think that some of that influence comes through in the proposal. So again, this is the existing view at Madeira at 101, close to the Chevron. And what we're proposing uh, is then just this new residence in. Um, I think the things to note here are we, we really embrace that, that horizontal expression of the floors and the overhangs, um, creating that really welcoming port crochet canopy um, in a very similar location to the one that's there right now. Um, but really wanted that to have you know, a, a wood soffit so that it feels natural and welcoming. We wanted it to extend over two lanes of traffic so that it's um, a sense of protection and arrival. Uh, we wanted to do um, warm color temperature lighting rather than sort of that daylight close to blue uh, color palette. Um, and we also wanted to tie that lobby great room into the architecture overall. So the ceiling of the port crochet becomes ceiling of the lobby and extends out into the courtyard. So that when you drive by or drive up to the building, you see right through it and experience it all um, as a layered experience. And then looking at it from the other side, from Highway 101, um, you know, we have this berm that we're proposing to both elevate and extend, um, but we also have the visible, you know, two, two and a half stories of the building from the highway um, broken up. When we angle the building, we introduce these knuckles where we can drop the height. Rather than having one run, one long run of guest rooms, we introduce this, you know, break at the halfway point so that it feels more like an articulated collection of buildings rather than a single run. Uh, we're also proposing to reuse the existing monument sign on the freeway, but tone it down a bit. Right now it's full color. We wanna go with the more sort of muted gray and white palette. And then just these elevations kind of reinforce what we're talking about in the, in the plans and renderings, but you can see the stepping of the mass from four floors to three. You can see that horizontal expression and you can see mixing materials and colors to create variation rather than monotony. And the same when we turn the corner and look at the meeting room space facing um, TD Ameritrade um, and this port share canopy as well facing Madeira. To get into sort of a, a typical bay for a little more detail, um, we're talking about a building that is primarily um, EFIS. It's you know a stucco appearance type building. It's, it's the most efficient, energy efficient way to, to build these days. Um, and we'll use you know paint and integral color to provide variation um, in, in, in color from one area to another. We're proposing overhanging roofs um, over most of the project uh, with a wood soffit um, to create shadow and relief um, and emphasize that horizontal, horizontality again. And also bands at the guest rooms. Um, the residence in module steps in and out uh, to create variation in the facade. Um, and we're going to accentuate that by sort of bridging across some of those recessed areas to create pockets for, for shadow. Um, and really trying to create sort of a, a top, middle, and base, you know, where the top is a lighter color with an overhang, the middle base spans and has a clear expression, and then the bottom has more texture as it meets that um, concrete plinth. And it's worth noting that we're elevating the first floor um, in response to flood risk. And so this building sits on a concrete plinth, and that sort of creates that first layer of the building as a pedestrian before the building starts, rises out of that. And you can see that might be an opportunity for planting and, uh, and foregrounding. And then the material palette, um, 
there will be there will be ephus there will be we're calling it wood but it's going to be most likely something like a, a parklex prodema it's a high pressure laminate um, it is a, a real wood veneer inside a panel which is dimensionally stable um, resistant to uv um, you know this is this is a building that the owner wants to hold on to for 20 50 60 years um, so they're they want materials that are going to look good on day one and look good in year 20. Um, and that's been sort of what's guided our, our interest in things like high pressure laminate wood, um, fiber cement panels, um, centered stone, and then sort of more timeless elements like, uh, you know, black and um, black and steel and uh, in situ concrete. Uh, I'm going to touch briefly on bird safe design. Um, the requirement of the land use ordinance is that we provide, you know, one of these five criteria. Um, the easiest ones really to hit are the um, unnecessary interior lighting with the guest room energy management system. Uh, turning off sensors in rooms will go a long way towards towards uh, that bird safe criteria. So we, we hit one of those right away. Um, we're also aiming to be dark sky compliant. So we have a, submitted a lighting program where um, lighting is it's down lighting. It's not up lighting. We're not going to uplight the building. Um, so we should be good on a second one as well. And then lastly, the non-reflective glass, we typically spec a, it's called a low E glazing, but it's an energy efficient glazing system, a solar band 67. The cutoff for being non-reflective is 15%. This will probably be 16 or 17. So we're very close. So um, we need to hit one of these criteria. I, we're aiming to hit two and a half. Um, that's sort of the takeaway from that. And then lastly, just want to show a, a roof plan. This is the conceptual photovoltaic layout. We're really you know, kind of going for broke. If, if there's space to put a panel up there, we're going to put a panel up there. Um, and then the other takeaway is we're proposing to use a very energy efficient um, VRF air conditioning and heating for the guest rooms. And one of the benefits is that we have relatively small mechanical equipment on the roof. And we're going to place that towards the center of the roof to limit visibility um, from the neighborhood. So you don't have a large air handler, you have a couple of small boxes pushed towards the center. I want to quickly touch on signage, proposing to uh, reuse the existing highway sign, create a new monument sign along Madeira, and then add one on the building. Um, I know there's been a little bit of concern about the reuse of the existing highway sign, um, just given the, the the scale of everything um, along Highway 101, we feel that we would very much like to retain that highway sign, but tone it down to a you know a gray and white rather than the the high high color contrast one that's there right now. There was also some conversation last time we talked to you about the Port Cachere. Uh, when we first showed this, we had a lighter color scheme, we had the light columns, um, and there was some feeling that maybe it was too large or too tall. So we looked at some alternatives, um, including stepping it to have a lower one and a taller one, um, and then different articulation for the columns. You know, we have a sort of a, a black and metal quasi-industrial uh, aesthetic that'll start to come through in some of the interiors as well, bringing that to the exterior if, if the Y column was sort of a sticking point. Um, but for now, we, we feel that this, you know, very generous port crochet that creates uh, a real sense of arrival and continues through the building to the courtyard still feels like the most appropriate solution to us. So we're, we're hoping that the, the commission can support that. And then lastly, you know, this is the kind of ambience that we're trying to create at the interior of the project. Um, you know, a, 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 a somewhat lively space for people to uh, guests to have a drink, have coffee, you know, go to the pool with their kids, breakout space for the meetings, um, and kind of uh, you know, if you stand where this gentleman is, you know, get a view of Mount Tam. You know, really trying to get uh, as much of a connection to the place as we can um, out of this project. Um, and I, I I do know that um, while this is a, a hotel that welcomes you know, guests who are paying overnight and everything else. I, I know that uh, Renison would love to have people from the neighborhood, you know, cross Tunnel Vista, come on in, get a drink, hang out in the courtyard. I think it would be a, a very welcoming spot. 
So I tried to do that as quickly as possible. That's that's our presentation. We welcome your, your input. Thanks so much. Thank you. That's quite a uh, presentation there. Thank you very much, um, Garrett. And uh, you guys don't have any further presentation I would gather at this point. Uh, so here we are. We have uh, a good uh, amount of information that we've uh, been looking at uh, since the, the staff report and the plans were sent to us. I trust all the commissioners have spent a fair amount of time with it um, because it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, information. We have before us uh, three resolutions um, that we have to consider. But um, having just gone through that presentation, I want to see if any of the commissioners have any questions for any of the presenters right now. Um, Phyllis. I just wanted to clarify whether or not something was a typo. Our staff report talks about 169 parking places and the slide that Garrett showed was 160. Okay. So if Garrett would just let us know which it is, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Um, who, who's best to answer that question from uh, yeah, our you know. Rory might be best to answer that question. I noticed that discrepancy as well. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I'm not sure exactly what the, what the correct number is. Right. Um, I know in either case, um, it meets the town requirements, but... Um, I saw that um, and I counted them on the plan. And when I counted them, I got 169. So um, okay. that's, that's I think we're going with 169. <laughs> okay, fine. That's all, it's also consistent with what's in the application. Good. Um, Margaret, do you have any questions for the presenters at this point? Uh, I don't right now, thank you. Okay, very good. So I'll then go over to Dr. Bundy. Uh, yes, uh, is this an appropriate time to just ask questions in regard to, you know, what, what is being presented and what our concerns might be with it? I think that we can get into that discussion uh, uh, a little further on, but I want to know if you have any questions for the applicant right now uh, about the presentation or anything that they could answer in short. Well, the, the one question I would have uh, right now uh, would be, I'm, I'm pleased that uh, it's at base flood 11, that, you know, this isn't something that, uh, you know, police or uh, would have to go and rescue people if in the event there was flooding. And uh, I'm also pleased that uh, you're working with the neighborhood response groups uh, as uh, a command center. And I saw on the diagram, uh, a generator uh, appeared to be proposed, but I didn't see any comment about that. So I just wanted to confirm that there is a backup generator in addition to the battery system that you talked about. Yes, um, we are proposing a, a generator. Uh, the generator would power really critical systems of the building, um, lighting, um, IT systems, et cetera, uh, commercial refrigeration. So it wouldn't power the full facility, but would certainly power enough for the facility to be used well in the, in the event of a, a full-scale disaster. No, that sounds perfectly appropriate. Thank you. Is that all, Bob, that you want to ask right now? Uh, that clarifies it at this point. I have, uh, as, as I think the other commissioners, a lot of uh, other questions uh, uh, for later. Okay, very good. Um, Mr. Rizzo. Um, I was wondering, is, uh, is there a proposed uh, lighting scheme for the, for the public path in, in the back by the, by the pond? No, we wouldn't want to introduce any um, artificial lighting back there um, to interrupt with the habitat. So in, in the, the main core areas around the building where regular pedestrian activity is taking place, yes, and there, there, I mean, there will be lighting associated with the parking lot to meet code requirements. 
but for that section of the path that goes from the parking north, um, um, no, there's there's no proposed additional lighting. And and the, the fence is is that a, I, I saw some conceptual kind of photos. Or is it going to be a horizontal slab fence? Is it going to be solid? What, what's your interpretation of what the fence is going to be along Tamil Vista? A horizontal slat is, is the direction that we're going. And um, if there's any gaps, they would be so minor that you really can't see through. So mm -hmm. I think there was a, there was an image in, in this that looked like you can kind of see through it, but um, that's not the intent. Um, it would be a solid fence. Yeah, exactly. And then um, lastly, are, are the, <clears throat> the finish heights of the, of the guest rooms at eight feet or nine feet? It seems like there's a cross section that says nine feet, but I don't know if it's not showing up the soffit for the mechanical. We're shooting for nine. We wouldn't have um, a mechanical plenum uh, in the guest room portion that would be concentrated sort of on the corridor side and then it steps up. Sure, is, is this gonna be cement construction? No, we're looking at cross laminated timber. Oh, interesting. Which gives us great um, floor construction depths and a lot of great uh, ceiling height. And my last question would just would be that the parapet height is, is there a, some sort of uh, matrix on, or is that just to hide the whole roof? Um, the reason with it is static. Um, we, have the parapet proposed at 47 and then we have the the roof a little bit lower um if the parapet's too low we need a separate fall arrest system of guardrails so i the, okay. the main okay. reason for the parapet is to keep it safe up there okay and it screens the mechanical too which is is very beneficial okay great thank you that's that's all i have okay so I don't have any questions for the applicant at this point in time. So um, we are at uh, 843. We can open it up to public comment at this point. I think that uh, it's time for the people who have been patient to chime in and hear what they have to say. So I have um, a timer um, on my phone right here and I will uh, turn the speaker up so that when it chimes off, who's ever uh, speaking, and I will interrupt them, we'll end the three minute session. So uh, uh, let's raise hands if you want to make comment. And uh, let's see who we can get to uh, uh, chime in here. So we open the public comment section. And Tracy, uh, if you're there, um, yeah. we can uh, start. All right, let's see. Um... Pat Revezio has her hand up, followed by Dave McPherson. I'll start with Pat. Are you able to unmute yourself, Pat? Yes, ma'am, right here. Um, wow, I just want to say this is a great day for Corte Madera. We have come so far, and it feels like a long time to the applicant, I know, but it feels like a short time in the bigger picture of things. And I just have um, a couple of specific remarks. First of all, on really good stuff, the idea of bringing in breakfast and a bar is excellent. We'll have fewer people dying just to get over to get a cup of coffee at the town center. So really great move there. And I love the layered look looking into the building where you can see all the way out through to the patio. You have done something so far and above um, where we were last time around. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for really taking seriously and looking into this berm extension. I hope you'll look into it even farther because I've been doing some reading and it's not just the noise that it helps to block, but they're used in many places throughout Europe and in Denmark to um, reduce the pollution that comes onto a property from the highways. So it really does act as a carbon sink and a lot of the exhaust fumes coming off of the vehicle can actually kind of die right into the dirt there and help enhance the hotel's image as a real environmental uh, gemstone uh, along the highway. So I hope you'll look more into that. And also I think it could help the sight lines. Um, my one fear is that we're going to get the wind cup backlash that happened when 
the wind cup was so visible along the highway. And I know this is a different and it's farther away from the highway, which sounds great, but I think the berm could also help make it appear uh, not quite as big. Um, other thing uh, is that I love that I love calling this the Corte Madera Inn. And I hope we don't lose that. I mean, I think it's a residence inn from Marriott, but I think for the people here in town, it is and has definitely earned the name as the Corte Madera Inn. So I really would like to, to encourage the owner to look at keeping that. And then um, I'd like to see where the, some of the trees are that aren't uh, uh, reflected in the plan, especially from the highway side, but I think that'll take care of itself. My one big concern is I kind of got this hands off feeling about the pond. Um, you know, we weren't, we weren't going to go to the water's edge. We're going to just leave the pond exactly as it is. And that's not living up to the commitment of restoring and preserving the pond. So I would just like the town to just put in a requirement that we get an annual report from a biologist that there is a, there is somebody on staff, not on staff, but somebody who is commissioned to help, you know, we heard from the biologist about what it would take to really make this a beautiful wildlife pond and it would take some work. It takes some aeration and, and some special plantings and um, I don't know that it needs to all be done right away, um, but I want, I think the owner has not demonstrated that they really care about the pond. They wanted to fill it in and it's been dilapidated and allowed to be in disrepair for many, many years. So I just want the town to hold them accountable uh, to living up to that commitment to preserve and restore the pond, not just the path around the pond, but the pond itself is, is part of their responsibility to keep it living and vibrant. Because as we heard from the biologists once before, the widgeon grass and the shellfish creation that comes from the fact that there's widgeon grass there, it turns this little pond into somebody, I think it was the botanist, called it the Marin Joes of the shorebird population. You, yeah. it, really, oh. it really is the place to get the good food. So thank you so much. Um, hope you guys will take those in consideration. Maybe I'll send a follow-up email. Thank you very much. We have David McPherson. Go ahead, David, you should be able to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Very good. Um, I wanted to, first of all, I'm completely, as just a, a citizen, I'm completely supportive of the commission uh, approving this and sending it on to the town council. It's such a much better project than what was previously um, submitted and um, I, I'm so pleased that um, the applicant and the owner stuck with this. Uh, what I wanted to tell the commission is that the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee wrestled with three different presentations uh, by Parisian Associates giving various options for how to uh, prevent or to increase the safety of guests of the hotel who might want to go over to the town center. And uh, the, the current proposal uh, is what we decided was the best alternative, although it really does require <clears throat> guests to be directed up the street to the west to that intersection. And most guests, or no, most pedestrians in general will want to try and dart across you know, the shortest distance from the lobby, the uh, poker share, and then across over towards Il Fernayo. And so we're gonna monitor that, I, I hope with, with appropriate signage and the landscaping, and we discuss possibly even putting in a railing that would be sort of partially hidden by the landscaping that would prevent pedestrians from making a beeline across Madeira where uh, cars coming off the freeway, or cars approaching the freeway sometimes hit, you know, 40 to 45 miles an hour and could really uh, be a disaster for, uh, for a guest crossing there. But uh, we did agree as uh, uh, the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee that the design that's currently presented for an enhanced sidewalk crossing uh, to the west at, uh, at near the bank is uh, the best possible design. And with that, uh, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, David. Uh, uh, Barbara Salzman. Go ahead, Barbara. Yeah, I just unmuted myself. Um, I'm representing the Marin Audubon Society, and I just wanted to, I missed the, unfortunately, I missed the, la the presentation by the biologist at the last meeting, I guess. But um, I did want to express our support for certainly keeping the pond. Um, and uh, we would like to continue to work, as uh, one of the presenters said, about the timing on the work, if that could be arranged so that, um, it's there's minimal impact on the um, heron rookery um, by you know the necessary construction noise. If things could be done inside during the period they're here, um, of course they leave for half the year to go nest elsewhere. So there, it's not a total uh, prohibition. Um, with regard to uh, the berm, yeah, it's a great idea. You can plant it nicely with vegetation that would also help with native vegetation that would also help to um, buffer the noise. Um, and with regard to vegetation, we usually don't talk about vegetation elsewhere, but these days with uh, water um, um, limits, uh, it is really beneficial to have native plants. They are water, uh, native plants to Marin, uh, Southern Marin, they are um, uh, less, they use less water and uh, they just provide habitat and they're pretty too. So, and I guess the last thing would be, I was really pleased to hear, I didn't pick this up before that you're talking about bird proof glass, but I'm not quite sure why you couldn't be, um, 100% um, compliant with the recommendations. I don't, I'm not an expert in, um, in uh, bird safe glass, but uh, there is a lot of uh, significant bird loss throughout the country due to collisions with windows. So if, if I'm not quite sure why you couldn't be the 15%, uh, why it has to be a little bit more. So maybe someone could explain that and there could be some, um, you know, uh, adjustment so that you could be meet the 15% that was stated. So anyway, thanks to the applicant, we'd uh, like to continue to work with you and um, appreciate the opportunity. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, um, Julie uh, Kritzberger should be able to unmute yourself, Julie. Hi, Julie Christopher with the Court of Madera Chamber. Uh, we would like to show our support for the rebuild of the new hotel. Uh, the existing hotel has become outdated, and no longer reflects the quality image that is indicative of our, of our community. There are many benefits to having the new hotel, which brings, um, TOT revenue to our town and every dollar that's spent at the hotel, the typical guest spends a minimum of $1.25 in the local community. Much of this is spent at our local stores and our restaurants. The owners have listened to the residents concerned and have worked these into the new design. We sincerely hope that the planning commission will consider their proposal and pr approve to move forward on this very important project. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. I see that we have a number of attendees. Um, so uh, if anybody else would like to raise their hand and uh, provide some public input, uh, that would be great. Do you have any uh, emails into the system, uh, Tracy? Uh, no, no emails, Chair Chase. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to just give it a second more here before anybody else to raise their hand. Uh, I don't see that happening. So uh, I'm going to close the public comment section of this item for tonight. And uh, we are at uh, 8.55. Um, I would like to see if the uh, applicant would like to respond to any of the comments uh, brought to bear tonight. Uh, 
Um, Garrett, do you have anything to say to any of those, or do you want to have anybody else uh, respond to some of that? Um, no, I, I really don't have any comments at this point. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to just reiterate what we have to uh, look at tonight. We have the negative, negative declaration that we have to consider, uh, which is uh, first resolution. Resolution certifying an initial study and mitigative negative declaration and mitigation monitoring and reporting plan. So that is a uh, um, important piece here that we have to get through. And I'll, we'll come back to that. The second piece again is conditional use permit and hotel floor area bonus plan. Thirdly, We have preliminary and precise plan, design review permit, and the sign permits for the Court of Madeira residency application. So um, I'm going to just ask the commissioners here um, one by one, or uh, if you have any uh, commentary or anything about the uh, negative deck or um, we can ask for a resolution here from anybody. Mr. Rizzo. Peter, could we yes. take our break now, please? We've been going at it since seven o'clock. Could we could take a five minute break, please? Okay. Let's do that. Let's take a short break and we'll be right back. Thank you. Peter, may we have some discussion before we talk about the, uh, uh, you know, the separate uh, resolutions? Certainly, yeah. Um, I'd like the discussion to be focused uh, in some way. Um, we have these three resolutions which do provide the framework for the issues. Uh, so um, if, if you have some architectural commentary uh, or if you want to talk about uh, the mitigation report. So. Okay, I don't know if it was in the mitigation report or not, but uh, when the architect was speaking about the bird safety and the glass, he mentioned fritted glass. And I wasn't familiar with that. So I looked it up in Architecture Digest while we had a chance. And it extols the virtues of it and talks about the top architects using it. And uh, it is wonderful for bird safety. So. I think the fritted glass that was mentioned should be adequate. And maybe the architect would like to speak more about it. I'm not gonna quote a whole article. Right. Like no, the, um, <clears throat> and in, for instance, in San Francisco, fritted glass is, is now a requirement for uh, guardrails over a certain height or handrails so that uh, the birds don't uh, slam into the, the glass. Uh, it's a requirement and that's a, a standard for such things. I think it's quite relevant and I think it's appropriate. Yes. And attractive. Because can, you use designs, it could be made attractive too. What else, uh, Phyllis? Uh, two things. The fence whether it should be four feet or six feet. I don't have a problem with six feet, especially since there's going to be plantings and uh, in front of it. I'm thinking of it as a safety measure. I mean, we're hearing about all the, the high crime rate that is arising throughout the United States. And uh, whether it's because of the pandemic or whatever makes no difference, it's still happening. And I think six feet would make it tougher for someone to climb over. And it's not only for the safety of the hotel, the, uh, you know, guests, it's also uh, to keep from rooms that are empty being broken into. And when you look at that uh, drawing, it shows it's kind of a low burn that the fence is on, but when you look where the parking lot is, 
where the car is, the bottom of the car wheels are as tall as that verb, a call for lack of a better name. So I would like to see us stick with the six feet as a safety measure. Mm -hmm. And I would like for us to discuss it as a commission and also you'll hear from staff and the applicant, uh, any thoughts they may have. They started out with six feet and I'd like to know their reason. And I've heard from Adam, you know, the reason why staff had some concerns about being too high possibly. So if we could just discuss that, I'd appreciate it. Okay. All right. Um, anything else on your uh, list? The other thing was uh, discussing the upright beams for the canopy. And this is something poor Garrett heard about with the last design from me also. It's, and I don't think you want me to go into details now, but when you, let me know when you want me to. Okay. All right. So we got a couple of items there on the uh, topic list. Um, Dr. Bundy, do you have any similar sort of concerns that you'd like to bring to the table? Uh, yeah, the, from the, the design and aesthetic standpoint, I, overall, I, I like the, uh, the architecture. I wasn't quite sure on the color palette, uh, particularly on the 101 side and the Tamil Vista side. We see some uh, of the uh, uh, IFAS uh, panels that describe varied colors and the renderings uh, are, are not totally clear to me is what colors we're going to be seeing. And I don't want to end up with something where, as we had with Tam Ridge, where uh, things were approved and then we looked at the colors and, or the Planning Commission at that time looked at the colors and said, what did we approve? So I, I'd like to get a better understanding of what the color palette is going to be on uh, some of these panels uh, that are there. And I'd also like to get a better understanding of energy use uh, for the project. Early on, uh, it was presented as possibly an all electric uh, facility. And um, uh, I'm concerned about the uh, gas fire pit, just the image of that, you know, does not say s sustainability. Uh, I've become aware of these uh, water vapor uh, fireplaces that uh, create the illusion of fire with just LED lighting off a 110 circuit that uh, could be run, uh, you know, uh, for longer periods of time than uh, what Garrett was talking about doing with, uh, you know, the fire pit that would only be on intermittently. Uh, also the uh, gas uh, water heaters, as opposed to uh, heat pump. Uh, so I would, I would like to see even more energy efficiency if possible, uh, even more uh, minimal impact on the environment, uh, and would like to know if there was a gray water system considered for the new building itself, uh, where the gray water would be used for irrigation or as part of this laundry uh, reuse also, if that could be integrated. And lastly, I did have a concern about the freestanding sign, which I know they're entitled to, but from the standpoint of the public good, the public realm, the public benefit, doing away with that, I think would be a great benefit. We approved the Evergreen uh, Motel. And they uh, voluntarily removed the freestanding sign that was there. Marin Suites, which is just north of the uh, residence inn, does not have a, a sign, a freestanding sign. And I would certainly support allowing, if by variance, if necessary, uh, to put a, another signage on the south or, or the uh, east facing uh, towards 101 corner of the building where the uh, existing sign is on the south side. Uh, I think they're under their signage limit as it is but I would just see this as a public good. And are these freestanding signs really necessary? This is gonna be a building that's more visible than any of the other buildings along there, including I think Tam Ridge. And with GPS, how important uh, are these? 
So those are uh, some concerns I'd like to see addressed. Okay. Very good. Um, <clears throat> hey, Margaret, you're over there looking thoughtful. Um, I have, well, I share uh, Commissioner Bundy's concern about the um, the solar panels and the energy efficiency of it. I was frankly disappointed to read that it was going to only save cover 25 to 30 percent of the demand. I I was hoping it might even be above 50 percent at least, and I'm. I understand you're limited by the space to put the panels, but perhaps a few covered parking uh, areas might provide, like um, Redwood High School has that, uh, might provide some other services for uh, more panels. I think solar panels are just becoming so common and so well used I think um, I think they could do a more efficient job of, of using them or placing them. Um, I have uh, I think uh, Commissioner Metcalf has previously uh, touched on this, but I also have a concern about the look of the uh, canopy over the front of the building. I. I think the building is great. And I think just that canopy is a real sort of whole hum uh, compared to the, the way the building is designed. So I'd like to see that looked at. And um, I also think that there are some other creative ways the, uh, the hotel could be used for the public good. Um, in a disaster, I remember that the, the town, uh, the community center was used for charging phones and charging electricities. Perhaps that could be done. A library room in conjunction with the public library might be some way to integrate um, the public into there. Um, I, I just think there are other ways. And I also share um, Patricia, uh, the public comment about doing more to restore the pond rather than just sort of have it there with a path around it. Those are my concerns. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rizzo, you're over there on the side of the screen and I'm sure you have some uh, pertinent items to bring to bear. I hope so. Um, I, uh, Peter, are we going to get a, another chance to talk, or were we, we just going to address the 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 first uh, the first item? No, I think we'll have another chance to talk, but I don't know what your your ban, how wide of a net you're throwing here. No, it, it's not. I, I just wanted to kind of do a, my summary of everything in the design portion when we talk about the. The design resolution. Yeah, so I'm, interest, I'm interested in the things that uh, you would like to have us discuss as a whole right now. Okay, well, um, I think design-wise, um, you know, I, I think uh, um, <clears throat> Commissioner Bunny kind of hit something on the head with just a little bit more continuity with some of the materials. I like the materials. It just seems like some of them are a little bit, a little bit randomly placed on on the facade. Um, they did a great job of breaking up the mass. It just seems like some of the, the wood panels are kind of randomly spaced. And it would be nice to see a little bit more continuity with where some of the materials are placed uh, design-wise. Um, but I don't have any comments about the, um, the, the mitigated negative declaration report. I think that, that they've done, we've had, we'd ha we've had almost every consultant available over the last few years look at this project. And I, I thought that um, there was something in the readings about rehabbing the pond, unless I missed something. I thought that there was going to be a cleanup and replanting of some indigenous plants. Um, did I, unless I heard something, I didn't hear well, something. I, th I think you're right to that 
uh, point, but they're going to leave the water level uh, and below alone. They're not going to touch the pond itself, but they are going to clean up the invasive species around the pond. Oh, but not in it. Not in it, right. They're staying out of the pond, right. Okay, well, if there's something that needs to happen in the pond, it definitely should be looked at. Um, and I have to agree with some of the other commissioners on that one. Um, but other than that, I, I feel like um, uh, it'd be great if they can get the glass to a point where it, it does meet the criteria. I, I do feel with with it not being a glass box, um, it, it, it does mitigate some, some form of... Um, so the birds do not hit the, the glass because there's there, there is a lot of other elements that that are visible. Um, but other than that, I, I think as far as the report goes, I've got no problem with with um, with making the findings for the for the mitigation report um, and and the uh, conditional use for sure. And um, I like the design, so I, I'll, I'll go. I'm going to stop there and, and I can give a synopsis and a summary of, of the rest of the. Uh, what I think about the design when we talk again, but it, it's not going to impact um, the discussions that are that are going to proceed. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> we can break this down into some co some common elements between you guys. Um, I think that um, the uh, idea of the uh, Western or the Eastern elevations and the, the EFIS uh, coloration is important to consider uh, myself at uh, I think Bob's point about it not becoming a uh, uh, point of gasp and, and awe at some point when the, the stucco goes up and that we do have some understanding of it. Uh, we don't have a materials board um, that would represent the colors and we're not in person in meetings. So that's kind of a uh, handicap here that if we were in person, we might be able to look at this stuff uh, and understand it a little better. Um, so I want to come back to circle back to uh, trying to knock these things off a little bit better. And then we'll ask uh, for the applicant to in, uh, respond to some of this stuff. Uh, First off, Phyllis's commentary about the fence. By a show of hands here, um, is anybody, uh, is everybody on board with Phyllis's comment to make it a six foot fence? Just raise your hand if you think that that's okay. Okay, we got th three commissioners. Bob, you think that the shorter fence is more appropriate? Yes. Okay. I think the staff report uh, outlined that it really did create a bit of a wall uh, and that uh, the shorter fence would be more appropriate. I think uh, Garrett would be the one to address whether there's a uh, crime uh, related issue uh, with a four foot versus a six foot fence. Uh, uh. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that the landscaping is going to uh, hide the fence in s substantially over time, but we'll bring that back to Garrett about that one. Um, uh, Jim, I wanna ask you if you had any comments about the uh, canopy there, because both uh, Margaret and Phyllis talk about the canopy. Do you have any architectural commentary about the canopy? I, Who are you asking that of? I think he was yeah. asking me, Bob. Um, yeah. Commissioner Bundy, excuse me. Um, well, at, at, you know, at first I felt like the scale of it was a little big, but I understand that you kind of need that that kind of scale. To, you're going to have big trucks coming in and out of their buses at some point. Um, I don't know. They're, they're sort of sculpture and cool at, at, on, one, on, one, on one sense, but then they... They kind of don't meld as well with 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 the new design. So, I, you know, I'm I'm kind of 50 50 on it. I, I think it's kind of cool, but I also don't um, I don't have a, a very strong opinion um, either way. But but 
you know, if it, it's really bothering the other commissioners, you know, I could be persuaded for for them to to give us a few more schemes on that on that design. Uh, Phyllis, you have something to add? Hi, just what, Jim. I was not talking about the size of the canopy. I'm talking about a problem I have with the upright beams. I think they don't vis uh, visually balance with the canopy. It, it looks like uh, what you see in a garage over the pumps, those Y-shaped beams. I'd like to see something oh. with your okay. character. Okay, the, um, the, the column, uh, the column. The, the column. columns, yeah. Um, okay, well, are, are you are you thinking you'd rather see something a, a little bit um... heftier? <laughs> How's that? So, did you see the pictures that I had Adam send to you? Yes, I did. It, it was a glass canopy with with a with a pitched roof. Yeah, I mean, the pitched roof wasn't important. It was more looking at the columns themselves. The the weight of it, the visual weight of them, match better. I think when you look at the front door of the hotel, because it is a beautiful hotel as far as I'm concerned. And the only thing that I do question is that when you look at it, it's got the large glass doors and then it has that panel look on each side of, I don't know if it's the um, fake cement or whatever they're using. And then all of a sudden you have these skinny little wide things for columns. It just is off. I had the same problem with the uh, 14 through uh, 2017 drawings and discussed it with Garrett mm -hmm. at the time, the columns they used at that point. I, I just think the weight, the visual weight, mm -hmm. I'm not worried about it falling but, down, but the visual weight doesn't work. It, is it just that it, it, it's just the columns? It's not, um, I thought you were also talking about the transparency of the roof. Oh, well, I would like to see, it looks like there are glass panels inset on either side. Mm -hmm. Look at, I'd love to see the glass throughout the whole top, but I, that to me is not, that's just a personal preference objective. I'm being more objective about the columns just not working for me. I, mean, I love the, the idea of uh, glass canopies. That's a preference of mine. I'm not, I'm not talking about it should be peaked or anything. I like the flat look. It works more with the lines of the hotel, mm -hmm. the horizontal lines of the hotel anyway. Dr. Bundy, um, how do you feel about the canopy uh, supports? The, uh, the, the flat canopy certainly fits in with the design of the building. Um, I'm uh, sort of, uh, I guess, neutral on the uh, pillars. Uh, on the one hand, they have great visibility from the street. Nothing really seems to stop you from seeing the front of the building. And so I, I would probably uh, go with the what the architect and uh, what the owner really want from the standpoint of their look. I understand Phyllis's uh, uh, concerns and something potentially could have been done differently. Okay. I would... Uh... Margaret, you stuck your hand up there. Yeah, I, I guess uh, my problem is just with how solid that the canopy looks. I, I would like to see more glass panels in there because it just looks almost oppressive um, and, and heavy. And I agree, being held up by the shape of the uh, pillars, there's no, it just sort of doesn't go. There are no other triangular shapes that have been introduced there and they that triangle shape or, or kind of comes out of nowhere to me uh -huh. okay but i'd love to see more glass i think that would really make it a, a beautiful um space um my thoughts are that it is best as a shaded area and that i don't like the idea of glass overhead as much because I think the shade provides a necessary element to the entry of the hotel. Um, and for my part, I am, I would also defer to uh, Garrett and his staff for this design. I think that the openness of that canopy is something very nice and that it, it doesn't present 
uh, as a more solid area because it doesn't have big columns and so forth. Uh, I don't think it needs big columns. Those are those are my thoughts about it. Um, but we can uh, talk to uh, Garrett about this. So we've got fence and we've got canopy. Um, I want to ask these guys about their color scheme on the eastern side. Um, we've got this energy use uh, thing in front of us now. Margaret, you said you thought that was a low quantification of uh, uh, solar panels and you wanted to see more brought in to uh, get more solar uh, capacity out of this, uh, which is a tough thing to do. Um, but um, I think that they've come a long ways toward uh, covering, uh, providing solar PV capacity. Uh, I, Bob, you also uh, questioned the use of gas and so forth in this facility for as much as they've got. Uh, we'll ask them about that and we'll talk to them about the freestanding sign. Um, so, and then Margaret, you brought up the community aspect of this uh, and that, the, that you would hope in a disaster or an earthquake or a fire power outage, uh, public safety event that perhaps the room could be used for uh, battery charging and so forth. So um, we don't have a scratch board here that I can put these things up on and that we can talk to the, the uh, applicant about, I wish we did, um, but we'll go back and we'll bring them on. Adam, you look like you wanna say something here. I think actually I, I'd be happy to create one of those. It's one of the advantages of Zoom. We could probably just write them all on a piece of paper, but. Certainly, um, yeah, uh, I think the apple giving the applicant a, a chance to speak to some of these would be helpful. Yeah. Um, so, um, Peter, I, I, I have one last thing. I just, the, yeah. I've been kind of talking about this path in the back for a while. I, I kind of, it bothers me that it just dead ends <laughs> and it doesn't come back to Tamil Vista. Um, it seems, and it, it's not lit up. It, it just seems like there could be a, a place for crime. It, sort of seems like a dead end where kids might go to put a keg. I mean, it's just... Have you been over to that uh, parking lot that is in the building next door and how the path just walk, goes right into that parking lot? Yeah, I kind of walked back there and it's past a dumpster. And I mean, right now it's not very, uh, it's not a very attractive place to walk by any means, but it, if it's going to start being embellished by new landscaping, it's going to, you know, people are going to want to walk back there and use it. And especially if there's going to be seating areas and places to, hang out. I was just wondering if any of the, the other commissioners see it the same way as it, it should, maybe the path should continue into the parking lot to the north or to Tamil Vista on the side. Well, the, the, the pond and the property line are practically the same at the north end of that mm -hmm. uh, pond and the, and the property line is right there at the parking lot. So, um, when you look at it, there's no place for a pond, or a path to wrap around on that end. There just there isn't enough room without removing some of the pond Got it. Uh, or getting into the trees. We're not removing any of the pond. No. Um, <laughs> so, Peter. Yeah. I um I actually hadn't thought about that, but Jim just brought up a really good point, I think, about the fact that if it's being made more attractive and people will want to be there at night, if there's no lighting there, it's just like a liability. It's, um, it's dangerous. And I think about that area behind the, um, what used to be that Australian steak restaurant at Marin Square where uh -huh. they did drug dealing there because it was dark and secluded. Um, I think that that needs to be looked at a little more carefully. I think it's dangerous. Okay. Well, we will ask about that. I think some of the consultancy might uh, say that we don't want to be uh, creating something out there, but we'll let them answer that. Uh, Here. 
Yes, Phyllis. One thing I didn't see a lot of was a lighting you know, schematic. And I think, uh, I always forget what they're called, those uh, lights that come like knee high. Not, yeah, small uh, post lights. Yeah. What do you call them? They're just small post lamps. Yeah. yeah, I mean, those, it needs lighting from a safety point. I'm sure, I don't know who their insurance people are. Their insurance people will tell them the same thing. Just like insurance people want certain lighting in a car for a car dealership at night for safety. And um, I think proper lighting, Jim, is correct. And I think we all have to worry about safety today. Right. And uh, lighting along there would help, you know, mixed in with the landscaping, even if it's those low to the ground, you know, foot high lights, rather than those ones that they have along pathways that come up to maybe between my knee and my waist, you know, those heights. And uh, that would make the difference. But having looked at that and walked around it the last time around, and even this time I took a walk by one day, there isn't any room to put in a path. Because I know at one point, I think when we had the meeting last January on this uh, member of the public, might even have been Pat Ravasio who brought up having a path circle the whole hotel so people could enter from Tamalpais and people could enter from Madeira and go around the uh, pond and there just is not the room to do it. Okay, so I'm going to ask uh, Garrett to come on board and, and to direct his uh, staff to answer some of this stuff if he's able to unmute himself and maybe it's Rory or someone else to answer some of these specifics. We've got the fence, we've got the canopy, um, we've got the colors, we've got gray water, we've got the sign, we've got solar panels. Um, where would you like to start, Garrett? Well, um, that's all kinds of options. Um, why don't we start just maybe with a, a, a overall sort of commentary on, <clears throat> on our sustainability efforts. Um, so when it comes to sustainability, um, you can always do more, right? There's always something else you can do. Um, and we, we really looked at our guide, really the hotel ordinance. And the hotel ordinance pointed us to Cal Green Tier 1 certification, uh, which I, I really want to emphasize is significant. And, and that was talked last time about with, with our, our consulting, but, but certainly there's a lot that goes into that, five different areas. Um, and it's a lot of work and, and frankly, a lot of cost. Um, so in addition to that, uh, we agreed to sort of push the line further. Uh, we understood that a PV solar system was important to the planning commission. Uh, we went ahead and, and, and did that uh, above and beyond Cal Green tier one. Uh, we also understood that some kind of water reading system was important. Uh, and we've incorporated that into the project and it's a, a significant water saving. So we feel good about what we've done. Certainly we could continue to recycle more water in other areas. Um, we could try to add more PV panels. We could, we could go on and on with this, but I, I think what we've, we're proposing is, is substantial. And I, I really think the community should feel good about that. And we'd really not like to pursue additional measures. Okay. Um, then let's let's look at a couple of other simple things here. So, uh, th with the gas and energy usage, um, have you looked at alternative ways to reduce the gas energy of uh, the gas usage of the property? Well, um, we we have looked at other systems, um, all electric systems. And, 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 but again, I, I kind of go back to my, my comments about sustainability. And I think, I think we've, we've pushed the envelope pretty far here and, and we, we prefer to sort of stay, stay where we are with, with what we're proposing. Okay. Um, and the gray water uh, seems like uh, you're recycling a fair amount of water through the laundry. Is that so? Can That's you address uh, that system at all beyond what's been brought up? I don't know if there's any other options regarding the gray water that you have not looked at 
that you decided not to. Right. I mean, we, we did look at recycling um, guest room water, um, and it, it just was problematic. It, there was, first of all, it, it, it's problematic to, to use recycle that water in and around the pond. Um, you know, there's potential contaminant issues. Um, it's not a very efficient system. It doesn't work well to emitters. Uh, they tend to clog. Um, and it just, it's just not a system that, that makes a whole lot of sense. And, and that's really why we focus our efforts on the laundry water reuse system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you speak to the continuity of the colors and the materials along the, the east side of the building as a particular uh, place of concern? Um, is there a methodology to the placement of the colors um, that is pre presents a pattern, or is there some way you can describe how the colors are placed and what they are? I'm going to invite Rory to discuss that. Thanks, Garrett. Do you mind if I share my screen again for a moment? Not at all. So this is the east elevation facing Highway 101. Um, so in the vertical direction, we have this top middle base uh, differentiation, top floor, two in the middle and the bottom one. Um, and then we have these very strong horizontal bands um, that capture those two floors and run continuously. And if we don't introduce any variation, it starts to look like a grid or a tartan if these were all the darker color infill panels. And so it is um, it is a random, it's a considered random sprinkling of an alternative material. It's kind of, um, there's no rhyme or reason to it, but it was um, switched until it looked good to me and the team. Um, and then as far as the actual color selection, I think um, we're close to the point where we could provide color swatches um, of you know what paint color we think we're gonna be shooting for. Um, and then fine lines with brush outs on site because the paint chip, you know, never looks like it's going to look, you know, in, in daylight outside. Um, does that sort of address the question? I think it starts to, yes. Um, and uh, uh, the next part of that question would be how many colors are there? I, I see three. Um, or are there four different colors on that uh, eastern elevation? I can't quite tell. There yeah, are. If you look at A404, it shows the, uh, it's like a material board, you know, it's, oh. and I, I think know. that'll give us a better idea. There you go. So, so we have at least three colors of EFAS, which will be used everywhere around the project. Um, and then the only um, sort of zone of ambiguity really is um, the bottom floor, where we're not sure if the best approach yet is to do um, a fluted uh, fiber cement panel or a light gauge metal or you know two by twos on a rack in front of EFAS with a darker color behind. That's one of the few areas where the design intent has been well established but we haven't figured out exactly what that assembly is gonna be just yet. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be where a, a fourth color would come in. Okay. All right, so the horizontal bands are all one color and then you've got three colors for the panels uh, that are the vertical separators. Uh, just two. It's either the, the darker EFIS or it's um, a wood panel. Okay. And then above on the top floor, it looks That's like a lighter, a, a lighter EFIS. Yeah. Okay. So that would be the dark EFIS, the lighter EFIS, and then the, the blonder or the browner color. Is that what we've got? Yeah. The, the, the intent is that this is a, a wood panel. Um, to oh. match the the soffit of this overhang and the soffit of the canopy, so that that would be a unifying element around the building as well. Okay. 
Um, Bob, do you have any more questions about that or, or Jim? Yeah, I, I just can't get behind that. I, it just seems too random to me. It looks like it's under construction. Like, like they're wait, we're waiting to paint it like it's the primer or something. I, I feel like I'd rather see it more consistent at the dark color on that band or, um, it, it, to me, it doesn't seem like I get the whole asymmetrical balance of it, but it doesn't feel like it's balanced, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, and if that's not a deal breaker, I, I, I'd like to see a more consistent um, color scheme. And it's really just that, that kind of MF color that really kind of throws me off on the larger elevation. Right. Bob, is that is that what the ones that kind of throw, throws you off as well? Uh, yeah, this would be uh, if we saw this on a building that was nearby that we could actually go by and see and get an understanding of uh, what this looks like. That would be great, but that's probably not available to us. Uh, so I'm just having a hard time with the vision thing of how these colors and the pattern fits together. Okay. What if on looking at this, uh, on the left, you see wood over wood on the second and third floor. Then in the middle, you see the uh, dark brown over the dark brown. And it's just the one on the far right that has one of one color and one of the other. What if they use the same color for the second and third floors and didn't change you know, that type of inset? Would that help? Can you kind of, um, Rory, would you, would you put up the larger elevations? Because, yeah, I mean, if you start looking at that, that bottom elevation there, you could sort of see it just. Yeah, it's sometimes it's dark, sometimes it's light. And I'm saying make a whole, whole from yeah. the second and third floor the same. Yeah. Kind of like over here, when you see yeah. not one one color and one the other. I think that's what's kind of moving mm -hmm. our eye around. Yeah. It, we try to look at it. You guys have done a great job of breaking up the facade. I don't think you need to do it with the color of the ephus is what I'm kind of getting at. I think it's so what you guys are essentially saying is you'd rather see a pattern of, of regularity rather than an irregular randomness. Yeah, I would. My eye. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we go ahead, Ron. Uh, we could very quickly look at um, eliminating the wood infill panels and going with you know all the darker reefs for consistency, or we could look at you know banding, alternating. Yeah. Dark and wood stacked. That wouldn't take very long. We'd be happy to do it if that would help the commission at all. I like the use of the wood because it goes under the band. Mm -hmm. at the top. That's why I wouldn't want to see it eliminated. Okay. So I think if I could just see it as a better rendering with what I thought were more realistic colors, that would be helpful to me. I mean, they, you know, this is uh, a nice architectural style, a nice architectural design, and I'm sure you're doing something that makes sense to you. I just need to have it make sense to me. <laughs> Okay. I think you can put up the renderings and they, they actually provide a little bit more materiality on the renderings. See, it looks, it looks great there because the bands are the same, right? Um, if you look at the right below the, the sign there, you've got the wood next to, you know, it just kind of all works. And then, but when you look at the other side, the, the really long side, it just doesn't seem like there's a rhythm to it um, or a reason. So I, I, I mean, this looks great right here. This view looks fantastic. Look at, yeah, but that's the front. Look at uh, page five of those uh, renderings they just sent us in the last couple of days, because that's the freeway side. Right, Roy, can you pull that up, the, the freeway rendering? Um, yeah. I, excuse me, I, I, I'm very sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to note that it's 10 of 10 and perhaps a motion to uh, continue past 10 might be in order. 
Thank I'll move to continue past 10. Second. Okay. Everybody, so we've got. Uh, Aye. 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 Okay. Margaret. Doesn't need to be unanimous at this point. I don't know what Margaret is. Aye. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Ann. All right. So we're looking at this. Uh, Northeastern elevation of the hotel as you drive by, and um, uh, it has the random panels there. The horizontal yep. bands are all the same color. But it also doesn't look like what it looks orangey. It's getting to be a little bit wind cup looking in the way that rendering is. Yeah, so let's look at, let's consider then it's, it's the randomness versus the pattern. So there, thank you, that helps. Um, I don't, we don't want to tell these guys how to, uh, or what colors go where, but we want to give them the input of whether if it, we want to see a, a regular pattern or randomness and let them work this out after they hear the commentary about what those colors are. So, I th it is hard to uh, get this without seeing these pieces of material in person. Um, but I thought these lighter colored panels that you see on the second, third floor was supposed to be the same color as the horizontal across the top. And they don't look that way. It, it looks more orangey, that's a word. Can you confirm that uh, at this point, Laurie? Uh, no, Laurie. Uh, yeah. Talking about this, this, this yes. soffit. Can you see my cursor at all? Yes. yes. Okay. This soffit and this panel should be the same, and it would be a, a real piece of wood cut super thin and made into a panel. It it is the same. Well, it's similar to the to some of the wood paneling that is at Tam Ridge, not in terms of color, but just in terms of materiality and and color is a different color. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh... Wind Copper Tam Ridge has orange. It has, it has many colors. And I'm just saying these two should be the same color and they just didn't produce that way. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the front view is more apparent um, because they're both, um, it's a rendering rather than reality, but they're both lit by artificial lights rather than daylight. So there's less of a variance from the shaded overhead to the, the vertical plane. Um, but the intent is that it would be the same wood species. And there's a there's a shadow on the um, the soffit, right? That makes the color look a little bit different. That's just because of the shadow. That's right. Okay. Well, I think the way it was done in the front is lovely. And it's mixing the two colors, and maybe the colors can be mixed the same way across the back. Okay. Yeah, they've imbued the project with the golden light of sunset here, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it does impact the uh, apparent. But I'm colors. talking about what looks dark brown, what looks light brown. It's. Yeah. And I think that really looks good the way the divisions are. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see more of that in the back. Okay. So, Karen, Rory, you hear some commentary about randomness versus uh, a pattern and some coloration representation that needs to be more accurate if that's at all possible. Um, and uh, I don't know what you can do to uh, represent that in the elevations or in the uh, mock-ups here, renderings. Okay, so Okay. Then, 
uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get to ten o'clock here, and then we're gonna go to ten thirty, and I don't we're gonna have to continue this on to the next uh, meeting. So I just want everybody to be prepared for that. I think at the rate we're going here, so. Um, I want to uh, talk about this, the signage and so forth that Bob Bundy brought up. Jarrett, do you want to comment on the signage that, that uh, Dr. Bundy raised? Sure. Um, yeah, the, the signage that, that Free Standing Sign, yeah, we believe is a, it really is an important, important element of the project. Um, certainly, um, Commissioner Bundy is correct that, that with everyone's uh, cell phones and GPS, certainly um, signage, building signage is no longer used to uh, direct people who know where, know where they're going. Um, but what's important about the signage to us is that it, it serves as a, um, as a reminder uh, that the facility is there. And, and probably most importantly, a substantial portion of, of our business is sort of walk-in spontaneous business um, without reservations. And so that signage sort of captures that traveler, captures that traveler just going up and down 101, um, seeing the sign, not necessarily thinking they might stay in Corte Madera, but, but potentially grabs them. Um, and so it's, it is important. It is important to the project. Um, and as Rory mentioned earlier, uh, the colors are, are subdued, um, just sort of, you know, grays and, and whites. Um, and with the vegetation around the sign, um, it seems to fit okay. Uh, certainly that sign's been in place for, 50 plus years, and I've never heard a negative public comment about it. So um, it is important. Um, I, I understand Commissioner Bundy's comment, um, but um, we'd certainly prefer to keep it. Okay. Uh, thank you very much about that aspect. Uh, but I'm going to move on to another one. If you would pull up the uh, rendering of the front of the hotel, please, again, one more time. The close one or the one a little bit further out? Uh, the one, the close one. There you go. So we've got um, two and a half commissioners that uh, would like something different about this. Um, I, for one, like the design. I think it's appropriate. Um, but um, I'd like you to respond to uh, Phyllis Metcalf and Margaret Mandel's uh, commentary about the nature of the supports and why or how you might adjust it, if you would, or whether you want to stand behind this design. Rory, I think that's for you. Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna push it back to you. Yeah. Um, I I could go either way. Um, I, I think there's something to be said for sort of the the lightness, um, the, the sense the canopy is floating that the white column uh, makes possible. Um, but you know, we also have you can sort of make out a hint of it. You know, we, we have a bridge at the second floor that connects the, the two wings of the hotel um, through the lobby, which is, uh, you know, a, a large sea channel of um, black and steel. It's a very sort of an industrial aesthetic. Um, and if, you know, that was a deciding factor, if we went with, a, you know, a, a chunky I-beam out front and that made the commissioners feel much more comfortable with it, I, I, could, I could live with that. I think it would be appropriate. Um, I, so I could see it going either way. Um, I did want to point out, um, with regards to having glass panels in the canopy, it's, it's not, um, a fully opaque piece. We do have some cutouts, um, along the edges so that you have the shade without the, the full cover. So there should be some dapple light coming down into the space. So it reduces the overall sense of, of overhang, uh, sort of hinted at with this, yeah. this yeah. lighting in the render. So I think I gave you a non-answer on the columns. Yeah. Kate, did you, there was a, um, a, a different rendering 
uh, or image of different columns in one of the in the presentation. I don't know if that's helpful for the commissioners or not. But um, Adam, if if I could just add a little bit to what Rory was discussing. Um, you know, we we like this design. This is the design that we uh, put forward for the simple reason that you know we we happen to find it very appealing. The comment about the uh, slenderness of the Y column, uh, you know, being perhaps just a little bit too uh, thin. Uh, the request was that perhaps it could be made a, a you know add a little bit of heft. So, uh, you know, I, I think instead of considering abandoning this design, uh, one thing we might do uh, is, is study adding just a, a, a wee bit of heft to these members that are shown here. And there's a possibility that they could become uh, maybe something that is, is a little bit more visually uh, acceptable to those who are, are feeling that this is just a little too slender. So I, I don't think it's a this or that. It's a maybe we could just tweak this uh, and, and get it to where it would be satisfactory. Peter? Yeah. Or, could we well, see that rendering again that I don't know who's putting up the sheets of, yes, this one, the top one. I, I don't know if this is supposed to be the same thing, these two from different angles. This looks too wide, the one on the bottom, but the one on the top, if it, if it was narrower, because the lines match, everything is you know straight lines, which I love that are either horizontal or vertical. They're not curves, they're not angles. They're just either horizontal or vertical. And I think that's one of the things besides the heft of it that bothers me about it. If you want the openness, I'd rather see something like this uh, than seeing the Y. Plus I see the Y at all the gas stations. I, it's, it's just something that as soon as I see it, that's what I think of. And this hotel is too attractive to make people think of a gas station. I don't know what Garrett and his team think of that. Well, we certainly don't think of it as a gas station. I know. No, I didn't mean that. I mean the the, the design of the poles, Garrett. Yeah. So, I, go ahead. Well, I, I was going to say that um, you know what what we really are looking for here is 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 resolution. Um, you know, the yeah. idea of us not being able to get to a conclusion tonight, um, I know is, is, a, is a disappointing one for all of us on yeah. this side. Um, so I was gonna propose perhaps that we could, you know, continue to study certain aspects of this while maybe yeah. the overall project is, is able to move forward. Well, that could be part of the resolutions approvals with certain things would be taken care of before there's a building permit. And I don't know, Adam, is that possible? I mean, I don't know the right legal wording, but approving a project and saying we would like certain things looked at before the building permit is allowed. Is that a way to do it? Yeah, I mean, there's ways to structure conditions of approvals that essentially would okay. meet the findings, but for um, aspects of the project that would need to essentially return to the commission for further um, but it would move along, but it would move along to the next meeting of the council for their approvals, even though these conditions aren't met yet. Yeah, but it, yeah, I mean, and I don't know if you can help here, but it's 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 structuring the language and getting the language right of the conditions of approval that the commission wants um, with respect to the different aspects of the project that we would want to. Uh, essentially return uh, while approving the rest of the, the project design. I, I, th I think having it go to the council while there are still matters reserved to the planning commission might be a little confusing yeah, uh, for the council. Yeah. 
perhaps you could simply recommend that the, as part of your resolution, recommend that the council attend to these features and consider and, and consider alternatives and the applicant could be asked to better develop alternatives um, to present to the council. That way the project moves to the council, but the council is alerted to your concerns and options are presented to it that are not before you right now. And they could, that could be done in two weeks. Because it's about two weeks before it's supposed to go to the council. No, it's it's it, it yeah, it won't be going in two weeks to the council. Oh, it's longer than that, so there's more time. So, uh, this is what uh, I want to circle back to is that we have the basic bare bones of the uh, three resolutions uh, that we have before us, and um, I would like to. Uh, take under uh, review the uh, initial study and mitigated negative deck and the mitigation not monitoring reporting plan um, for this project. Um, I would like to take these things uh, one at a time and, and dig into it a little more and possibly create the uh, conditions of approval surrounding each one. So um, the, the comments that have been brought up so far apply uh, to each one of these things, uh, except the first one. Um, I think that um, the uh, mitigated, mitigated negative deck is uh, um, well presented myself. Um, and I don't have any, I don't not hearing any commentary about that issue or that resolution at this point. Are you looking for a motion, is that it? Yes. I'm willing to make the motion once I find the page. There's so much of this here. Maybe Adam could put the page yeah. up. Uh, okay. Um, sure. This is uh, resolution 22002, Peter. Yes. Yes. Okay. In the matter of recommendation by the town of Cordova, of the the Town of Puerto Madera Town Council to approval of a resolution certifying an initial study and mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring and reporting plan for the Puerto Madera Residence Inn, application submitted by Renaissance Hotels, Inc. And it's what, application 024-031-15 I move approval. And that includes the resolution 22002 and the permit number PL2021-0023. Is there a second on this? I'll second. Okay. Call the roll on this one. Sure. Uh, Commissioner Rizzo? Yes. Commissioner Bendel? Yes. Commissioner Bundy? Yes. Vice Chair Metcalf? Yes. And uh, Chairman Chase? Yes. Okay. So the next resolution is the conditional use permit and the hotel floor area bonus. So um, we've had some commentary surrounding this. Um, and if you go into each one of the segments of the uh, plan, uh, Mr. Kenning, I don't know if it's possible for you to bring up the uh, bonus point slide that might help us get through this. Yeah, and, and I would like to make one point regarding um, the sustainability aspect of the floor area bonus. Um, as structured and as approved, the ordinance basically assigns um, points and says the findings for sustainability, I should, environmental sustainability are met if they meet Cal Green tier one standards. And so those, those points are essentially assigned. It's more of a condition. There's not really, um, uh, and, and that's the way that the ordinance that was adopted was structured with respect to environmental sustainability. So they're trying, they're meeting Cal, Cal Green Tier 1, which would grant the six points available uh, for that uh, compliance. 
Uh, mm -hmm. They're doing additional voluntary environmental options, which is an additional two points that they could get from that, um, uh, from the ordinance, which is the additional uh, things that uh, Garrett mentioned in, in his presentation. Um, and, and so uh, really what is sort of under discussion for the is, is the voluntary environmental options and the two points associated with that. Right, so they've met the, the standard and they've gone above it with these additional elements. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was another uh, slide that was in the uh, staff report that um, I think. Yep. That, that, mm -hmm. This is essentially, I think, the slide from it. Yeah, can you blow that up a little bit or take it out of the slideshow format? So commissioners, here we are with the uh, things, the comments that you've brought up and the actual point system that we're talking about here. And we can look at each one of these uh, elements here and talk about it a little more. Um, environmental sustainability is one that I, they've met um, and we're, we've been discussing additional measures that uh, go beyond it. So um, I think that staff has pretty well defined what is required for this, this portion of the bonus program. Um, site planning and design, compliance with design principles. Um, I think that that one has been uh, addressed, but I'm willing to, you know, we should talk about that. If there's anybody that has any commentary about the site planning and design, the uh, pathway is certainly something that enters into it, but that is, um, I, I <clears throat> dare I say that's a, a um, a, a, an extra added uh, element to the, the site planning. Uh, community integration here. Uh, they, they've dedicated the space, they dedicated the exterior space, and they have an emergency response uh, disaster recovery facility that they're uh, gonna go to the Red Cross about. Um, so we have been discussing items that tend to go beyond what's in this list of bonus points, um, unless anybody disagrees with that statement. Since these are extra over what is needed and what they have asked for, does it have to be in the resolution? The resolution is basically, I thought that it meets the required points needed to be granted the hotel FAR assignment, the extra FAR. And anything else they do is over and above that could be up to them, you know, as long as it right. followed the rules and regulations and ordinances of Court of Madera. Exactly. So I think that the uh, the uh, way we can word a res we can add something to the resolution asking them to uh, uh, take under advisement uh, certain aspects of the plan. Um, but the resolution, to your point, is just about whether it complies or not with these yeah. these various elements. Yeah. I think that the. Uh, I don't understand what we're voting on. Well, it's right before us here. So. Well, if they met everything. Then your commentary is about the uh, extra steps that you would like to see them take beyond this, uh, these. These components of the plan. Yeah, and I can try to clarify, and maybe um, Sean, it may be helpful to put the findings up with respect to the ho hotel FAR bonus. So this is 
Um, is this the findings, right? No, this is the this is the point schedule, which is essentially um, so the finding with respect to aesthetics, and this is the, yeah, it is number one here. And that is where they're asking for 12 bonus points from number one. Right. And so that's these are essentially if they if you you know the commission feels they meet these findings, yeah. they can get the additional bonus. Um, the second one is 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 the one I was talking about with in terms of environmental sustainability measures that exceed the existing environmental requirements or mitigation measures and building code requirements in existence at the time of permit applications. Blah, 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 blah. So this finding, this is a, a unique finding in that it says this finding shall be met if a project is assigned additional floor area in the environmental sustainability category pursuant to paragraph B2. So if you go to the uh, B2 of the ordinance, it essentially assigns if you do Cal Green tier one, you get six points. And therefore that finding is met pursuant to that last sentence of paragraph mm -hmm. two. There's additional two points that they're trying to, uh, you're allowed to ask for under the sustainability um, part of that finding. Uh, number three talks about uh, on-site programmatic elements, site planning strategies, operational commitments that encourage public use, community gathering, supports community health and well, or supports community health and well-being. So then you go to the uh, finding categories and under community integration, these are examples of what types of things could be provided because the, in developing the ordinance, it was too vague. We wanted to try to provide some the applicant with examples of how to actually meet this finding. And examples include community meeting room, community service organization space, public park or plaza, habitat preservation or creation. Those were things that were examples given of how to meet this finding with a maximum of six points being offered for that finding. So um, the applicant has obviously spoken about uh, several aspects of the project that were are intended to meet that finding at six and, and be granted six points as a result. Um, the fourth finding is about public realm and then it, it, the, the finding shall be met if it meets uh, the public realm examples up to six points maximum and that talks about examples including the undergrounding utility poles in the right of way streetscape beautification safety measures um, for bicycles and you know examples include uh, safety measures for bicycles etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's a variety of things that you that an applicant could do um, to meet that finding and the examples provided um, are in the ordinance itself, but those are just examples. So you sort of have to look at the, the types of things that were proposed in terms of the safety measures, the, the changing um, the DARA, changes on Tamil Vista Boulevard, and determine whether or not the findings can be met um, and, and the points granted uh, associated up to six points for number four. And so what we we're showing in the table was what the applicant says we think you know based on what we proposed we think this many points can be met in each of the categories and it adds up to 0 0.29 29 points essentially or 0.29 if they are they only need 24 points but but essentially they they could they could based on what they're providing proposing um obtain 29 points and so you know, it, 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 you can get into the weeds on exactly you want to dock them a point here and a point there, but it's really better to, I think, just you know, holistically think of whether or not these findings, um, especially one, three, and four. Two is met, as I said, if, if they do the tier one, they get at least six points and they could get additional two points on that one. Can you go back to the table now, Sean? All right, so this is sort of how that breaks down in the applicant's request. Um, you can see eight in the environmental sustainability category where 12 is the max, um, six for the community integration where six is the max, 
three in the public realm where six is the max. So it's it's a you know essentially a relative. Um, that's the breakdown, and a, again there. That adds up for twenty nine, where twenty four is really needed. So if you felt that there were some things missing in design principles and and the findings there, mm -hmm. even if you wanted to dock them, essentially four points, they'd still have enough FAR to build their their project. Phyllis. Yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, looking at this chart, listening to Adam's explanation, we just went through. They've met this. I don't think, and they've given broad category, you know, broad answers of how they've met it. I don't think any of us on the, the commission, on the council, on the staff should get into the minutia of what are you going to do if this happens? What are you going to do if that happens? They've met it. Anything more that they do is fine. And uh, for us to spell out, Joe, you know, how many sockets you need to plug in phones if the uh, electricity is out, those, that, it's not necessary. That's something they could be told, we'd like you to do this, but that they've got their points. So we should move, approve the resolution. Is that a motion to approve, Phyllis? Oh, I'll be happy to make a motion. I'm getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, if it's possible, I, if it means us going to 11 rather than stopping at 1030 to finish this tonight, I will go the extra half hour then to have another meeting on it. I don't know how others feel about it, but you want me to read the motion? Please. In the matter of recommendation to the Town of Corte Madera Town Council for approval of a resolution approving a conditional use permit and hotel floor area bonus for the Corte Madera residents in application submitted by Residents Hotel. It's application, I hope APN means application, 024-031-15. It's resolution number 22-003, permit number 2021-0023. Thank you. Do we have a second for this? I'll second. Thank you, Dr. Bundy. All right. We'll call the roll on, on this one. I'll start with uh, Commissioner Rizzo. Yes. Commissioner Bendel. Yes. Commissioner uh, Bundy. Yes. Vice Chair Metcalf. Yes. And Chairman Chase. Yes. Thank you very much. So the last uh, one of these elements that we have before us is the preliminary and precise plan, the design review permit and the sign permits for Corte Madera residents in. Yeah, maybe. There we go. I mean, the, yeah, I think the design review, obviously you're very familiar with that. That is essentially, one and the same with the precise plan findings. Uh, the preliminary plan is associated with, uh, these are, it's associated with the overlay district because it's in the ER and H overlay district. There is a required pr preliminary plan uh, with the project. The precise plan is essentially the design review findings and then the sign permit um, has its own set of findings as well, which Sean has on here as well, if that's helpful. Um, but you'll see some of the preliminary plan um, findings are really um, talk about a, a larger um, development project. Um, and some of these are also uh, addressed in the environmental documents as well. So something like completed within a period of four years. Um, is that all building in Corte Madera? No, this is not. This is only if you're in a um, overlay district, then you're required to um, develop pursuant to a preliminary plan and a precise plan. You know, I'm talking about completing it within a period of four years. Yeah, only if you're in a 
and only if the uh, you're required to build pursuant to preliminary plan. Too bad. Well, I think all things that get started ought to be finished within. I, 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 I agree. Not, I won't debate you. If that's <laughs> a... If you can finish a hotel in four years, you can finish a house. In yeah, four I, years. but but it's really meant. It sort of goes. You know, number two is talking about phases of projects. So you can see how this might apply to an overlay district that's um, uh, describing a subdivision of some sort of larger project. Yeah. Okay. So as we uh, read through these findings, uh, there's another slide to the yeah. findings. Is there not? Yes. Um, and that's second group, one of three. So for example, I think, you know, typically the, the But you know, six is is some of what you're talking about in terms of uh, the landscaping and site plans. Um, typically, that's one where we talk about that uh, uh, the fence. Well, yeah, and, and the landscaping and, and sort of the visually visual aspect mm -hmm. of the project, so that colors and the and the so so on obviously can relate to number six. Uh, so with that said, you know, we've got some of this landscape stuff in front of us that we've talked about and we can't, uh, we can decide whether or not they've met the findings and then we can say whether we want to add some conditions or some uh, request of the applicant to address before they, would it be before it goes to the town council, Adam? Well, I think, you know, as Ann discussed, um, you can send a, along any recommendations that they um, address for consideration at the town council. Um, so uh, I think that would imply that the expectation would be that when they move and, and review, this is reviewed at the town council, they would have additional um, um, studies on some of the uh, and responses to the comments from the planning commissioners um, regarding um, the colors on the east elevation and the pattern. Um, and uh, it sounds like the, as, uh, the, as well, the, the supports for the canopy in the front of the building um, and any other studies that the commission thinks should be further considered for city or town council um, consideration. Did we reach consent on keeping the fence on a Tamapayas at six feet? Did you yes. say there were three of us, Peter? Yeah, I think that we're uh, all in agreement about the fence being at six. So, so the uh, resolution will have to be amended to show that because I think Correct. you said something about four. Correct. We'd have to change that condition okay. of approval that it would. We, we would just eliminate that condition of approval. Okay. Sean, do you know which? which... Is, is that in number three? In resolution three? We, it's not, it's, it's, we, we pulled out the conditions of approval as a separate attachment. Um, but oh. yes, those conditions of approvals would be attached to both the preliminary, uh, this, this resolution associated with the precise plan. Okay. Um, and another, so I, I think I forget what number it was, Sean, um, regarding the fence type, but we would probably we would just eliminate that one. Okay. And then uh, are we going to try to come up? Oh, thank you. Are we going to try and come up with the answer about the um, everybody calls something different, the pillar supports or columns of the canopy? Yeah, I think what I'm hearing the the uh, applicant uh, agreeing that they might examine that to uh, the point of perhaps thickening them or doing something 
else with the column supports to make uh, bring them to be more substantive. Um, I also know that we are, are expressing concern and would like a uh, consistency of pattern and, and of color for the uh, panels. Why don't you, the way you said it was good, just, you know, a better consistency. Right, and then a, uh, a more consistent pattern and a more consistent set of colors for the uh, layout of the materials. Um, consistent colors, um, I think it might be helpful to, uh, Dig into that one a little bit more. You mean um, less so, less variation in colors? Is that less, what we're less. I, I what I mean to say is less random. Uh, oh, okay. Pattern of the colors, yes. Okay. You know, setting them like more in the front okay. of the hotel, the way they set the different colors. So we've got fence, we've got consistency of the pattern, we've got the column supports, and um, I think that's it for um, the items that would fall underneath this resolution. Did we want to say anything about the path lighting or? Oh yes, you're right got that in there so that we would ask that they incorporate, if possible, path lighting and uh, along the pond to keep it safe and uh, walkable. And also along the wall that whatever the build, what next door is what right now, the theater? No, no there's no, another building. What? The whatever. Building. I, Lighting along that wall, you know, low to the ground. The other you know, within the landscaping and stuff. Just so it isn't tempting to go back there in the dark. Okay. So. Can we, did, did I ask that it um, you condition that um, recommendation um, on not? Uh, it's just a question that will have to be analyzed, not um, impacting any natural resource uh, as a part of the lighting. habitat as part of the lighting plan. Yeah. It cannot, and I don't know if that's a consultancy uh, uh, declaration or. Yeah, we could probably we would look into that and provide some. Yeah. Usually, when the lighting is low on the ground within a landscape, you know, landscape and bushes and stuff, that would not bother the birds. Yeah, and it we have to. Uh, it is 1034. We have to uh, have a unanimous motion, uh, motion and. Uh, Agreement to continue uh, to uh, eleven o'clock, which time the meeting would end. I, I move we continue to eleven. Yeah, I second that. Second. All in favor, Margaret? You need your. All right. All right. Thank you, Margaret. Yes. <laughs> okay. Peter. Peter. Yeah, Bob. I, I wanted to to weigh in. I think uh, we really shouldn't get involved in the path, which is really almost an artifact of the having left this pond there in the first place, that uh, I think Garrett should uh, put a sign up that, uh, you know, path uh, to be used uh, between sunrise and sunset or something like that, so that it's, uh, it's not used at night and uh, the lighting, Barbara Salzman may want to weigh in on that. Uh, the lighting may have an impact on the uh, birds. So 
uh, you know, this is something we should leave to uh, Garrett to decide what he wants to do with that. Bob, I can tell you never raised any children. If you think you can tell people they can only be there at certain hours. <laughs> Uh, well, that's what signage is for, and not everybody obeys it. The same right. issue people crossing uh, Madera Boulevard. You know, you just sometimes you can't fix stupid. I know. Okay, so Bob has made a good point there about the fact that, you know, this is uh, a pathway that goes out there around the pond that's meant to be enjoyed in the daytime. You're not going to see the pond very well at night back there. Um, if people walk back there, it's going to be just to stroll a few hundred feet there. Um, or get in trouble. Well, we don't have a lighting plan anyway, so, you know, that would come when they're developing the lighting plan, not something that we have to put in as a condition now. Can I weigh in just for a moment? Um, yes, Jared. Yeah, we do really want to discourage use of that path in the evening or at night. Um, you know, certainly the, the pond is intended, you know, public enjoyment pond is, is really intended as a, as a daytime activity, not a nighttime yes. activity. And so I'm concerned that, that by lighting the path, we're sort of encouraging an activity that we really want to prevent. That makes sense. I was more concerned about the lighting from the pond to Tamalpais, where there isn't a path along you know, the, the far side oh. where the cars are parked along there. We're gonna have landscape lighting, aren't we? Yeah, yeah there, that's what yeah, that's there, what I'm talking about. That there's landscape lighting there, along there. This is the lighting plan. Yeah, yeah. I mean I'm, I oh. mean parking par parking lighting. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, I was looking for the same one. Yeah. So the uh, the parking is right up against the northern property line right there. Oh, yeah, it's um, okay. And uh, there is no space through here. Okay. Yeah. I thought there was going to be some bushes and stuff, and I was going to say have some, you know, low lights to the ground in the bushes, but there are no bushes. You can't do that. The trees that are there, um, I'd have to look very closely at that. But, uh, Garrett, are you guys, are those trees that are out there now on your property, or are they staying? Yeah, most are staying. They're, they're, they're on both properties, really, and, and we're going to retain as many as possible, which is, which is most all of them. Okay. The lights in the parking lot, are they kind of like what we have at the uh, shopping center? where they'll go dimmer at, later at night, but then there's like a motion detector. If anybody's there, if a car pulls in or somebody walks in, they brighten up. Who can answer that question? Can anybody answer that? Rory, can you weigh in on that? I am reading through the cut sheets right now. I okay. don't know off the top of my head. Okay, I would like to suggest, I'm not gonna tell you, it's gotta be a condition, but I would like to see you do that. Cause that is another factor where you're not over lighting the parking lot at night, unless somebody's there. And as I say, the motion detector, they do this, they did this when they redid the lighting at town center and it's been very successful. It seems like a very good idea. I and think it's also if, part yeah. of the title 24, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. I think it's part of the code compliance now. So yeah. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, the, the, the ones in the lighting program are dimmable. Good. Okay. But also the motion detector that they'll brighten up when, as I say, a car drives in or a person is walking. If somebody is staying at the hotel and comes back at one o'clock in the morning from you know, doing things in San Francisco, you want them to have enough light that they're safe. You know, driving in, not hitting anything. Okay. So, yeah, it's a great way to light parking lot and it's required now so 
then where we are is that we are asking that they develop consistency of uh, color and pattern on the uh, layout. We are asking that they thicken the column supports and consider a, a, a different approach to the columns. And we are asking that the uh, fence uh, be a height of six foot. Those are the that's, three. That's a matter of taking out. Adam said that's just a matter of crossing out one of the conditions that right. have been added. Right. So with those notations, um, can we get a motion for this? Okay. In the matter of recommendation to the town of Corte Madera Town Council for approval of a resolution approving a preliminary and precise plan design review permit and sign permits for the Corte Madera residents in application submitted by Renison Hotels Inc. Uh, APN 024-031-15, resolution number 22-004, Permit number PL2021-0023. Thank you. Is there a second on this? A second. And that's with the uh, things we added in. Correct, I think that was clear. And you comfortable that that was clear? But you're, you're muted. I believe so, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The, and the second was by uh -huh. Commissioner Bundy. Okay, I'll start. Um, Commissioner Rizzo? Yes. Commissioner Bendel? Yes. Commissioner Bundy? Yes. Vice Chair Metcalf? Yes. And Chairman Chase? Yes. Okay. All right, so those will be recommendations to um, the town council and the commission will be referring those comments along with it and, and recommendations along with those resolutions that you mentioned. And of course, the entire, I think staff will reflect other comments that were made by commissioners. We're not gonna lose sight of the, uh, some of the other comments that commissioners uh, raised as well, uh, but weren't sort of part of the formal recommendation such as the, the, the pylon sign and, and others, um, other pieces of the conversation that the commissioners had this evening. Well, it's sort of extraordinary that after years of work, it comes down to um, okay. four hour meeting here and that um, it, it, it is a, a good showing that we're able to get through this in that short of time period. But I think the uh, quality of the application reflects uh, and what we've been able to do here. So uh, for the, the uh, Renison team here, I think it's really quite a uh, accomplishment. And um, I sort of thank you for doing this. Go ahead, fellas. Well, I wanted to thank Sean and our staff for their hard work. And Garrett, thank you for your hard work, you and Doug, and your patience since 19, was 19, 2014, and the team that you brought in to do the work. They, each team that did an extraordinary job in their area, and it shows in what you came up with for the hotel. I think we're all going to be proud of it. Thank you. And, and thank you to the whole team here, uh, Adam, Sean, everyone. It's been a it's been a long road. And it has been a busy <laughs> road, but I think at the end of the day, we've come up with, with a project that I think we all can be proud of. So, uh, thank you all for your support. Good. Okay. So, with that said, um, I would uh, rather than going into commission reports and so forth. I would say that we can adjourn this meeting with a fine result. Yes. I'll second that. <laughs> All right. I agree. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>